All right, everybody. Let me change the title here real quick. Oh, dee do, dee do, dee do. And it's going to be. The past is alive. All right, now we're back. Hey, three B, how's it going? Oh. And then I called you. And oh. You mm -hmm. had a missed call, but I called you. Yeah, well, it's probably a telemarketer. Missed call and unknown. You want to bring the other wash down? I have no towels. Yeah, I'll bring it down before I go to bed. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I'll get it. Alrighty, so not that that was that important. Telemarketing. All right, let's see. Constipated in Sin City. How's it going, guys? Thanks for uh, swinging by. I appreciate it. And so, um, two things. I got the. Uh, Finder update, and I got mail from um, John Jabs over at the Past is Alive. This is uh, auction stuff that I had bought into his last couple of auctions, and you know he finally he decided he's going to start mailing everything out, which is fine. I had him hold on to it until um, until you know he was ready to send it. But a couple other things that I came up with. Hey Adam, how's it going? Um, I did find this in a box. A um, main Ramirez uh, promo sample card. Mm. And I found a Matt Williams promo. So, pretty cool. And then I stumbled across this. I've been trying to put like this set together. And this is a David Cohn. Uh, this is 83. Uh, tops gold card but obviously they ran out of the gold the gold uh, ink there or whatever so it's just a David Cohn no name on front oh my god anyway so um yeah let's get into the mail um as usual I don't have scissors let me go grab the scissors Kitty, what are you doing here? I was right there all the time. What do you think? Close the door. All right. <clears throat> all right. So I think I got. I think I was lucky to get a, some Jeter cards. I think out of his auction. Some. Obviously not. Probably not every one that he put up, that's for sure. And boom, good enough. Unfortunately, I'm going to give them back to the wife. And as typical with John. He gives you a free lunch bag, too. Look at there. So, there we go. Empty. And the 
see what uh, what John see what John packed for lunch. Thanks, Adam. Cornet Collections, how's it going? Thank you for stopping by. All right, doing good, man. Just loving the hobby. There you go. Just loving it. All right. So here we go. There we go. So, yes, as like I thought. So, nice little team bags here. Yeah, I got the Gavin Lux. A uh, couple of three, three cars of Gavin Lux. And I bought some Jeters. Ooh, almost went flying there. There's one Jeter. Very nice. And I did find some more Jeters um, in my uh, one of my boxes, or a couple of my boxes I went through. Another Jeter. Uh, Jeter. I think I just stumbled across one of these, so I don't know if it's the same pose or not. Nice. All-Star Game Jeter. Very nice. Turkey Reds, right, or something like that, they're called. <clears throat> Judge. Uh, must, uh, he may be throwing in some Yankees, I don't know. Must have thrown in some Yankees. Oh, look at the mail card. I don't remember if I bought this or, or what, but he knows I'm a Yankee guy, so there we go. Um... Araldis Chapman, uh, Miguel Underhart, rookie card. If he can only live up to his uh, billing, his potential. How about some cool Reggie with them? Um, cool rays he's got on there, or ray bands, whatever they are. And there's the mantle, number 320. And it's chrome, so nice. September 28th, 1960. All right, let's get into the other one. Oh, what's this? Ah, uh, look, he he included he included one of his cards. There you go. That's it. Thanks, John. Holy moly! He just got these too. He said he picked up like fifty of them. So, and he showed these on his last uh, live stream, I believe. There it is. That is awesome. That is awesome. Very nice. Very nice. Look at that. There he is. Passed out on top of all that junk. Minus the wax. It's just junk. But cool. Cool one. Thank you, John. I'm going to put that right there. Front and center. All right. Let's get into the Lux. Let's check. Uh, thanks, Alex, for linking that up. <clears throat> Derek Lillequest of the Braves. Uh, what, this? No, that's a chipper. That's a chipper. Adam could have told you that because Adam's probably got it. Alright, let's see. Thanks, Alex. No, you guys just got some for me. Yep. All right, all right. I, yeah, I did think I got some Lux and uh, I think a pool hole slot too. I'm not sure. All right, so here's Gavin Lux rookie card, the 35th anniversary. Oops, got someone behind him. I'm gonna put these right there. Uh, Lux rookie card, nice. Lux Turkey Red Rookie and Lux Rookie. Uh, Lux Rookie. I don't know what the difference is. 292 and 292. So one must one might be a short print, I guess, right? But cool. Uh, pull holes. And must be a short print here, right? Because 
No? Yeah, one's probably a short print. Update. Uh, 280 and two. So we had two cards in the update set. 259, 280. Albert Pulhos, who's now a Dodger, a Dodger, but still pick him up because you never know. His cards are going to take off as soon as he hits the Hall of Fame. So, a lot of lux. Got to have lux, right? So, real quick, since. Um, Adams here. Let's go through some of the chippers I picked up in boxes um, that I had gone through some of my boxes. So we saw this one. And here's one here. And here's one there. You like to top 206s, I guess. Yeah. Chippa. Chippa. Nice um, tops chrome there. Chippa Stadium Club. Here's a mini from Fleer, or no, tops bazooka. Sorry, it's a mini from bazooka. Tops. Check the chat real quick. <clears throat> Walmart specials. Oh, okay, good. Everybody hit the thumbs up. All right, thanks, Adam. Something Wong. Uh, I am still mad at Pujols for 2011. <laughs> I don't know what happened in 2011 with Pujols. Did he leave the Cardinals? Um, Chippers. Chippers. With the 65 design, that's pretty cool. A chippa, chippa. Except it's a team's checklist, but there's chipper on the checklist. So Got to count that one. There's a HG Hollow GRFX or whatever. Postseason scrapbook chipper. Getting dirty. I think that's chipper. It looks like him. Yeah, Chipper Jones. Belted two home runs versus Houston in the NLDS. Chippa. Another chipper. Chipper. Chippa. Chippa. Chipper. 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 Here's a young chipper. National League Diamond Skills. Chipper Jones. I get the focus. There we go. Uh, like a fifth anniversary, I believe. Yeah. Fifth anniversary, upper deck. Chipper. Chipper. Uh, let's see. Upper deck, draw your card. Winner for Chipper. Um... This is uh, an upper deck card. Shockwave. Ionics or something like that. Here's a Crash the Game chipper. Gold. Don't know if they had other versions. Uh, National League Pennant driven chipper. 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 So these are all going to go in the chipper box. Shoe box that I've been putting together. And, oh, two different versions. One's like a, the opening day and the regular version. And so. So that was a lot of chippers. Nice little stack. And it seems that these are some of the Jeters that I came across going through those boxes. So here's a Jeter with uh, Luis Gonzalez on the flip side. Gonzalez is the foil, Jeter is the not the cardboard side. Jeter. A nice young Derek. Let's 
So, was that? Oh, no, that's Griffey Jr. That's not him. That goes in the Griffey Jr. pile. Okay. So, I don't have that cheater that I got from John. Cool. And then some more cheaters. Uh, Let's put them here. And some more cheaters. And that's it. Not a whole lot of cheaters yet, but getting there, I think. I don't know. All right. So we'll check the chat real quick. Move the glasses. We will put John's card right there. Check the chat, and then we'll see what new ones we have for the Griffey Jr. binder. Let's see. Conspiracy in the City. Boom. Did you see where you can send PSA graded cards to be placed where they keep your cards and if you want them, they will sell them on PSA. Each graded card has a to be worth a minimum of 50 bucks. Yeah, why don't they just stick to grading the cards instead of shutting it down and not allowing you to grade, but they have enough time to sell your cards. Yeah, mail me your card, already graded, and we'll sell it for you. You can do that yourself. Right? Great, now I had a pop-up. And it ain't going away. Hold the phone. I want to, oh, right there, hold on. Boom, there we go. All right, now it's gone. Chipper is my favorite player, but I mistook second the greatest ball player behind the great Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb is, is really good, for sure. He's ranked second or third, best third baseman all time, but everyone... Uh, but everyone, he's ranked number one or two switch hitters of all time. Well, Eddie Murray is probably, uh, you know, I think he's got the title of the greatest switch hitter. Mantle was another one. Great, great switch hitter. Um, so, yeah, switch hitters, Mickey Mantle, number one, no question. Eddie Murray or Chipper, too. Yeah, uh, yeah, switch hitters, for sure. Um The sickest chipper collection at Joel Berry 161. Had uh, the chipper greatest collection ever. Uh, uh, okay. Wait. Or is that I have the sickest? You do, Adam. You do have the, the sickest uh, Chipper Jones collections I've ever seen, that's for sure. So, yeah. So Murray was a 287 header. Hmm. It will store your cards safely and you can get insurance on your items. Yeah, I just see something going on with the warehouse and all of a sudden these cards are gone. And yeah, you get your money but not your cards and someone's got these cards for future, uh, uh, you know, shenanigans. All of a sudden they start showing up new new numbers new serial numbers on and all this good stuff so all right so with the the last uh, binder update was i added this one page here which was all like um checklist cards with um so i didn't have time to really go through it and they're not in any particular order i'm gonna have to i'm gonna end up having to put them in an order because um it's gonna be easier Gonna have, it'll be easier for me to find them later. So, let's get these out of the way. Alright. So, let's move my picture. There we go. Just stick me up here in this corner. So you can just get a, at least a glimpse at all the cards. So, this was one. I don't know where it's at. Again, I don't know if I put it. I didn't, I didn't go through this. Uh, poor preparation on my part. 
Um, I didn't realize I had I didn't realize I had this many um, more cards to add to the binder. So, but at least I left some room. So, oh, I you know I separate them by manufacturer at least. So tops. Um, so this is a gallery card, so I don't have it, or, or I would have seen it. No, so we only got these three gallery. Okay, so we're good. We are golden. Yes, sir. All right, so there you go. We're okay. So we can pop this one in here. Here, right here. Boom, so that's in there. Um, upper deck, upper deck, upper deck, upper deck, flare, tops, tops, turkey reds, right? Uh, these are tops, this is tops, upper deck, dumbass, upper deck, vintage, that's upper deck, tops, 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 upper deck, Tops, 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 and tops. So most of them are tops, so that's good. Alright, so um, since we're looking at the galleries, right? And these are gallery. So we're only putting one of each. So let's check these next two gallery. We saw that one. And up here. Turkey red, turkey red. Okay, I have to remember that. Gallery, gallery. Okay, so these two are not in the binder. We'll add these to the binder. So that's three more cards to the binder. Got a chippa display on it. Okay. So I'm thinking maybe the next binder I'm going to start putting together would be my Jeter, but it's going to be like a small binder. I don't have a whole lot. Alright, so let's get to the tops. Turkey reds. There's a red one. And I have the gray one, so let's see if that's the same one. It may not be. It may be a different turkey red. different one so these can be added to the old binder very nice real quick because it's moving pretty good hey void how's it going great turkey red is 2006 set fee is 2007 I have five of the 94 upper deck Ken Griffey 5x7 unopened box sets very nice bought a shitload of both okay 12 days of chipper yes I saw all that that was a great that was a great Got a great creation binder for 15 bucks on eBay. Holds 360 cards and the cards slide in sideways so the cards don't fall out. And no rings to smash cards. Okay. 92 black gold Griffey is sick. Oh, okay. All right. All right, so now we're looking for the stadium club. And it looks like it's going to be added to the binder. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Well, we're batting a thousand for new cards to the binder so far. All right. Now we gotta look for these two sporting news. Um, this mini got to be added because it's not in there. 
I didn't see them, so I don't think they're here because I also tried to put this, like the Topps Cincinnati Reds cards at the back of the binder. So I see that one's, that one's here, so we can pull that one out right now. That's that one, so that'll go off to the side. And those. So I got this upper deck here. Just pulled that card. Mad Dog. Uh, that's it right there it is. So boom goes back in the stack. Alright, these two will get added. I'm gonna have to add an empty page here for the tops. Three more. Um we'll check these three stadium clubs. So these three will get added. And these three we're looking for. Okay, didn't see them, so get to add a couple more. Definitely gonna have to add another page. So that's it there for the tops. We had one done Russ, but we've already got that one up there, so that goes in the stack. All right, and then we have a done rush. And that's that. Then we have Fleer. We only found found one Fleer, and it's probably in here. But I could be wrong. There it is. So that goes there. Next should be in the upper deck. Score. There were no scores. No new scores. So we're going to pass by those. Upper deck. We have a couple upper decks. So let's look. None of those are here. Nope. the 10th anniversary one. Here's the 5th anniversary. Here's the 5th anniversary one. Uh oh. We got team checklist. So we take that one off. There it goes. That's there. But we're doing good, so we get to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more upper deck. We'll go one more time to make sure. Because I'm surprised I don't have this one in there yet. pages to add these to the binder yet and that will update the Griffey Jr. binder. Very nice. Very nice. Let me check the chat because I've been turned away. I just pulled that card to all. Have a great one and don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Thanks Void. Uh, something wrong. The day I realized I was old was when Griffey got caught Taking a nap in the dugout during a game. <laughs> uh, must have been a boring game. 
All right. Let's see what else. John Jab should have autographed your card you sent him. You know what? That, that's a good idea. When I go see him, I will record him personally signing my card. How's that? I'll take it with me. Uh, this summer, I'm going to go out and spend a, a, a weekend out there. Probably leave on a Thursday night and um, spend Friday and Saturday with him because he is he's off on Fridays. Hey, Goody G, how's it going? Check the chat. I am, I am, I am. Um, uh, da, 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 da. The member's choice. Joel, thanks. I'll get you back. Hey, boom. Hey, David, thanks for stopping by. Uh, Joel Berry, 16. I don't have a channel. I just got back into collecting my start. One one of one of one of these. Oh, you will start one of these. Days. Well, that's good. So, so um, um, add moderator. So, Joe, you have moderator privileges. You can link your channel now if you want, or whatever. What have you got going now? I mean, you got. Don't you have something where you can at least get subscribers, right? Hey, David, how's it going? All right, so hopefully you guys all got moderator. That I just gave you guys moderator. Uh, da, da, da. He was in the locker. Oh, okay. Slang. What's poppin'? Hey, Void. Hello, Void. Hello, Goody G. Hey, Goody G. All right, so that's that's kind of it. I wanted to do the mail day with you guys. Um... Remember, we're doing our um, auction coming up on the 25th, I believe it was. The 25th, yes. The last Friday of the month. On the 25th, um, we'll do another auction, and that will be including football along with the other uh, three sports, hockey, basketball, and baseball. And, um, yeah. So I've been going through... Um, Trying to get some football cards together for you guys. Um, I'm surprised John hasn't uh, made much about this card e here either. This guy's um, Rex Hudler's going nuts, hugging the pole. And it's on the front of his card, not the back. So. Uh, let's see. I think I mailed out everything. Uh, oops. Almost everything. For some reason, I still haven't sent out Autographs 2000 stuff. And I know I have his address. So, All right. I'll have to work on that tomorrow. I, added, I just added those um, four boxes to my wall of wax today. Um, and I sold... The second, the second box of 2021 Heritage. I sold, I sold that to my boss. I, I picked it up basically for him, but in case he didn't want it, then I was just gonna rip it open for myself. But um, I s talked to him today, and I said, "Hey, you want that other box?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah." He said he got nothing out of the first box, so like junk. So I asked him if he wanted the second box. He's like, "Yeah." So, I'll take that in and give it to him tomorrow. Um, he'll pay me for it. 20 bucks. That's what I paid for it. So, no big deal. Um, and that's about it. The weekend's coming up. And uh, Friday, I'm going to... I'm planning on taking some time off of work. Uh, Friday. Probably all day Friday. Adam's... I'm sending out 10 tomorrow. Okay. Epiphany, how's it going? Um, I'm going to an estate sale um, Friday. And let's see if I can get that link up here. It was linked to me by my son on Facebook. So let's see. What do I have here? It's very slow. There it goes. 
Um, no, not there. But it was Facebook, so let me um, check here. So, this is what my son... Hold on, Void. I'm, I'm, I'm doing something right quick. You have to hold on. Um, so, this is what my son linked me for this estate sale. So, I kind of blow it up. So, it doesn't look like anything really great in these binders. Uh, there's some Philly stuff because, you know, I'm in the Philly area. Some kind of little baseball game there uh, some Babe Ruth cards or something there I don't know um, Philly stuff again um, and then what's the next one yeah here's the binder see it's just I don't know what year that is early 2000s I guess I don't know why they chose Prince Fielder but that's what they chose to highlight here's what I'm looking at some wax sets 93 that's the Jeter, Jeter rookie there, right? Um, 89. I passed on that just Sunday. Um, it's just 90, 91. 91. Uh, 92. Um, I got that one. Or, man, I keep touching it. I got that set already. That's a 95. This is a 91, or I think it's a 91. I passed on the guy had a table full of 90s, and there was one 91 set on there on Sunday. I passed up on that. 94, good chance that that's all bricked up. You know what I mean? If you don't take care of it. Here's what I'm looking at. These possible complete sets. 75, 76, 78, 79, 80, and 87. Who cares about that? The 75 is what I'm interested in. Um, I think I got two sets of 79s because that's the um, Ozzy Smith rookie card. 78 is the Eddie Murray rookie card, right? 75 and 76 is the Brett and the Yount rookies on 75. I don't know who's in 76, if it's Eckersley or who's in 76, I'm not sure. 80 is the Ricky Henderson rookie card, right? So, and then there's two of these golf, inaugural golf sets. I, I understand they're worthless. I gave one away, and I think I gave the other one to Jeff Airtime, I'm not sure. I had two of them myself. And then just there's just these box, you know, boxes of random stuff. You know, um, the cards don't look like they were that well kept. Looks like a bunch of 70s football. All right. Um, there's an 89 baseball card there from 89. And, yeah, I mean, you can see the corners are looking a little rough on all those corners of the baseball. Oh, some Phillies. Brewers tickets from 2006, some other ticket stubs, a little update set from, what's that, 90. Um, so, I, I don't know what exactly, there, there's some hockey cards here, Elvis, a couple of Elvis cards, and, I don't know, airline tickets or something, hotel rooms or whatever for the Brewers game, some more hockey couple little stack of basketball looks like and then they got all these matchboxes which I'm totally not interested in matchboxes uh, erector sets so it's an estate sale they've got um, Sports Illustrated I'll, I will go through them and see if there's any Sports Illustrated for kids just for those cards some record albums um, you know, LA Raiders, but it's not autographed. Here's an uncut sheet of something baseball player. I don't know. 
He's got a bunch of this stuff on the man cave. Sweetness, Sports Illustrated cover. I don't think it's the magazine. And he's got his rookie card there tucked in it. And a couple of other ones. So he's got them all along the wall in his man cave. Michael Jordan, A Star is Born. So maybe that's his first Sports Illustrated cover. I don't know. Ripkin's uh, Illustrated cover. How he long looks like. Dr. J. So you get the idea. Air hockey table, which I don't care about. Hats I don't care about. Some toys. Um, G.I. Joe figures. I don't know if they're old or not. Even got the dog. The raft. I don't think they're old because I don't, I'm going to fuzz that out. Well, I got my hand up there just in time. But it says, I'm just kidding. It says in like 1989 or something. There we go. 1996 on the guy on the thing's butt on the uh, right cheek. I didn't know I never knew they were serialized. Look at that, eighty-two thousand eight hundred and seventy-one. That's a lot of GI Joes stuff there. A whole bunch of extras, weapons, uniforms, stuff like that. GI Joe stuff. More Joe. A bunch of game stuff, you know, board games, puzzles. Maybe they're all puzzles. And then it's just the state stuff. Plants. But anyway, that's it. That's where I plan to go Friday. Hopefully I get there soon enough to uh, you know. Nab something. Alright, let's see, let's see, boy. Eighty two is a hell of set to collect. Well centered, I'd be I won a bid today on eBay, 120, 76 tops for eight bucks. That's pretty good. Eight bucks. That's a that's actually a good deal. Guys, don't forget to throw up your links to your channels up here, um, so we can. Uh, if, if someone's not subscribed to you, that's in here right now, they can hit you up and give you a sub. Red light. How's it going? Thanks for stopping by. All right, so um, let's see. We went over the chipper stuff. Um, ton, a ton of Piazza cards I came across. Literally, like a ton of Piazza cards. Um, Close this up. I gotta get the pages. They're underneath, I think, under the desk. But we'll remember to add them up. So I, I kind of goofed up uh, the weekend before last when I went to the flea market. And I bought those boxes of stuff cards off of Ronnie. There was a vendor there, a guy, just a guy selling um, penny sleeves for two bucks. Two bucks for a hundred, two bucks for one pack. And I kind of looked at him. I thought about him. He had like ten of them. I was going, man, I should just buy them all. And then I walked away and didn't buy any. And now I'm like, man, I need penny sleeves. I'm running low. You'd be surprised. Like, well, I mean, I, I still have, I still have a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got still have eight hundred left, but I started with a thousand, so you know, or ten thousand. Sorry. Here you go. If you want to check out our channel, okay. There you go. We'll throw your links up there, guys. Sub each other up. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't cost you a penny. Sub. Watch a video, make a you know heartfelt um, comment, you know, click that notification bell, and your subscription you know should stick. Smack who in the face? Yeah, I should have smacked myself in the face for not buying those penny sleeves when I saw them. Then I told Ronnie about it, and I hey, Ronnie, um. Uh, I didn't record anything at Ronnie's table. I just was just there as a customer. 
I should have recorded stuff to show you guys what Ronnie's got for sale too. Next time I go, I will do some recording at his uh, at his uh, tables. He's got actually he has like he's got a whole big and he's got a lot of room for people to stand around. You know what I mean? Like he takes up two spaces, and all his tables are in a horseshoe. They're not running down like right in the middle where you got to go down single file aisles. No, he's got lots of room in there for you to walk around. He's got boxes set up, you know, like all around. He's got a rack in the back of his boxes with all his new stuff on boxes like the the, the um, jumbo uh, hanger packs, the the hanger boxes, whatever, the, the, the um, blaster boxes, and even the mega boxes. All those are on the rack in the back. Um, and he has just tons of cards. That's where I bought all those like really, really uh, cheap uh, relic cards that I showed on the video. If I come back, he got 500. I get 500 sleeves for four bucks. That's a good deal. That's a great deal. That's better than good. That's great right now these days. Void's got a guy. He's got a guy that rides in the back of a truck and the stuff falls off the back of the truck. I used to have a guy like that. But prices got too steep, and now I can't even get them from him. So, picked up some more Mariano. Well, I mean, through bo going through boxes, I found some more Mariano Rivera cards too. Another one of these little flares. Or no tops. I keep saying they're flares or tops. Here's a um, Topps Chrome. There's an opening day one. Here's a Topps 206. And that's it. So I picked up, um, found a couple more to add to the very small um, Mariano Rivera uh, box that I've started. Let's see, what else? Uh, no, 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 no. Big Hurt. That's a. Uh, some nice big hurt cards too. Big hurt in an Oakland Athletics uniform. Yep, he's in an Athletics uniform for sure. That's uh, like a fifth anniversary one, right? And then here's the actual one that they took that fifth anniversary from. The Ted Williams. Um, best hitters of the future, Frank Thomas. Look at the flex in that bat, man. Look at it just from him swinging it. It's just break, almost broke already. I haven't started uh, any binders for Frank Thomas or anyone like that. I gotta buy more binders. So a binder with a hundred sleeves is twenty bucks. That's a pretty good deal, I guess. Through um, Target. What else we got here? We got the goofy cards. From Collector's Choice, we got quite a few of those. Gallery and and then these last two. So nice little little stack of Frank Thomas cards. See what else? Check the chat. The big boy, yep, Frank. If Big Herd ain't in a Sox uniform, burn the cards. <laughs> Heard someone in the background say shit. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know that I think that was the TV so I don't think they would have said crap on the TV his rookie cards in Auburn uniform though yes hey four leaf cards thanks for stopping by Hey, anytime you start the day and end the day six feet above the ground and six feet under, it's a good day, right? All right, so some Piazza cards that I just came across, like a ton of Piazzas that need to be put in the Piazza shoebox, too. I think Piazza's sharing the box with Chipper, though. Well, he's slowly taking that box over. So we got one of these. Gallery. How about Piazza in a Padres uniform? Doyers. Doyers. All-star card with Mike Stanley. Just two guys aren't even in the same league yet. Stanley was the uh, all-star for the American League catcher. Where was uh, Pudge? How about... These are what? Collector's Choice 2? Special. Oh, Special Edition. That's what they were. Collector's Choice SE. Special Editions. This is... All-star game cards and the foil stamping down here. Never mind this stripe. That's that was on the. Someone put these on the thing to I guess to hold the cards in. Little tapes. So. Oh yeah, look a buck. It was a buck back in the day. I don't know when that was. Million dollar moments from Fleer. I'm too hot. For, it's too hot for me to be sorting cards. There to Boyd. John Fishman, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Um, another Piazza. Hitters Club. Another upper deck piazza, hitting one up into the sun because he's squinting like squints. By the way, I gotta find that card. I so a couple years ago, I guess when when they came out with those um, that set that had the uh, Sandlot kids in, I think I I bought a box and I think I pulled two autographs. One was Squints, which was cool. Like I thought he was like the best character in the whole game. Anyway, Squints. And I forget who the other one was. I gotta find those cards. I just. Piazza grew up in. P yes, Piazza is a. Um, um, just on the outskirts of, P of uh, Philadelphia. Phoenixville, I believe it was. Yes, and I think uh, Piazza, he bought his fathership a string of. His father, a. Uh, uh, string of dealerships like Piazza Honda and stuff like that and Tommy Lasorda is from this area too because Tommy Lasorda was his godfather that's how Mike got in there you know you're, you're not like the, the last pick overall and you know really make it I mean Tommy had to help him somewhere along the way you know what I mean like my, my godfather's Tommy Lasorda so and Tommy would be like, yeah, I want this kid up here when I'm up here. And Mike didn't disappoint. We'll give him that. He didn't disappoint. Here's uh, some kind of all-star card or something. Eche Echelon, it says. Echelon. From Upper Deck. Piazza. Piazza, the future is now. 25-year-old Mike Piazza taking out uh, Terry Pendleton at home plate. Piazza getting ready to get down and put the tag on someone. Look at that look on his face like, oh my god, here they come. Matinee Idols, I've never seen this set before or whatever, but 
It's from uh, Burdak uh, Vintage. Oh, Piazza and a Mets uniform. Uh, Los Angeles Dodgers, a single, Star Quest. I guess part of a game, he hit a single. Another Star Quest. Uh, yeah, it just says Star Quest there. Tricky Red base card, I guess. Here's a fancy um, copper border card. Uh, an all-star card. He's with the Marlins in this one. I'll be dang. Masked Marauder, Marauders or something. Piazza. Here's um, Encore Piazza. Got a little um, uh, refractorish thing going on there, I guess. Power Elite, Mike Piazza, Catcher, HG, Holographics, Piazza, Power Trip, Victory, you just smashed the hell out of that ball, you can see the, the follow through. Hey, Stemmer's Hits, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by and hanging out. Trout is from Philly area. Trout is from um, Millville, um, South Jersey. But, so, my understanding is, and I'm not a native New Jersey, and I'm, I'm from north of Philly, um, about an hour north of Philly, um, between Philly and the Poconos, really. And um, uh, I live in Jersey. I've been living in Jersey for the last 20 years, though. Um, but Mike Trout's from Millville, New Jersey, but yeah, if you're from South Jersey, like the center, if you take the state and you, you cut it in half, the northern half of the state is a Yankee Mets fans area, and the southern part is like Phillies, so a lot of people, a lot of people, when there's a baseball game going on, um, and I'm trying to get into Pennsylvania, they're, they're like backing up across the freaking bridge to get into Philly because the stadium's right on the other side of the Walt Whitman Bridge. Here's a nice Piazza Upper Deck MVP. Another SP Piazza. This has got a little embossed action going on. Ovation. Black borders guys. And it's off centered. Look at that. Just like the 71s. It's got a little hologram going on there in that window. 50 cent back in the day. Uh, silver version of this card. 97 CC All Star. I have no idea what CC All Star is. Cover Glory. Nice wood grain border upper deck card here. All-Star Collection, Collector's Choice, All-Star Game, Piazza, Mike Piazza, Hot Lists, Mike Piazza, there's a nice one, got the Gold SP, uh, championship series logo here nice blue foil there matches the Dodgers colors fantasy fantasy team Piazza another upper deck Piazza in a Mets uniform there's the Mets team checklist with Piazza on it I think that's Robin Ventura there they're kind of high-fiving it Mike Piazza, number 466. Uh, this is a Fleer Flare from 95. Hot numbers. Upper deck. Retail predictor card. Dunruss. Uh, 
so see, uh, 97 Fleer. Anniversary card, 10th anniversary Piazza card from Upper Deck. Score, going yard, Piazza. Another collector's choice, All Star from 96. This is the base card, not the gold one. I have the gold one somewhere. Piazza playing the drums. Fleer Flare. Mike Piazza. Uh, 95 Fleer Flare. Perhaps it doesn't say it on the front. At least I can't see it with all that gold. Here's uh, Game Faces. Looks like he just got drilled in the ribs. There it is. With old Tommy looking over both of his boys. Top Stadium Club Piazza. Upper Deck. Uh, something Generation. Best, best of the generation or something, I don't know. Pinnacle, Mike Piazza. Tops. Tops. The Sporting News All-Stars. Hey, checklist card. Until I found these at the same time, I found all those Griffey Juniors because now there's going to be a string of checklist cards that match right up with the uh, same Griffey Juniors that I bumped into in the same box. But even the checklist cards have nice uh, pictures on. There's Irod Piazza and Jason Kendall. 98 top, uh, all tops catchers. Here's a Fleer Metal Universe, but it's all like gold. Don't know what that means. It's just the base card number. It's got embossing here that says oh, MLPD. I have no idea. And here's the, um, the metal, metal card from Fleer. So that was a boatload of piazzas. Turn that to the side there. Check the chat because I missed a lot of chat. Apparently he played for the Marlins between the Dodgers and the Mets. Okay. All star prospects might be better. Top prospects like to sign auto and give free baseballs. Yes, they do. Donald Blumdahl's in the house. Donald, how was your vacation at Yellowstone? I got to see some of your um, some of your videos you took. Piazza is a Hall of Famer. Yes, he is in the Hall of Fame. Bubblegum Mike Card. Mike blowing the bubble. Uh, Chris, you know what? I, I do have those uh, Consecos. I have a bunch of Consecos pulled out, but they're not pulled out like that. They're in um, fan favorite boxes. So, eventually I'll be trying to do binders of all those, you know, those big, big name guys, all the big fan favorites, like the Consecos, the Maguires, the Pujoses, and all those. Um, so, uh, it's going to be a lot of binders along the wall. Um, I, I wasn't a big binder guy, but after seeing Pepino Man and some other people's, um, 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 Hey Mikey and um, Pepino's and some other people with all their binders, um, they just look really nice, organized, so, uh, and, you know, better than just boxing them. Dale Murphy ever get into Hall of Fame? Well, it's gonna be you know up to the um, the uh, other committees now. Um, he's all he's been done, and they haven't gotten him in yet. So maybe not. He, there's hope though. There's hope because Harold Baines got in and you know stuff like that. So there's hope for 
the the guys, the Donny Donny baseballs of of uh, you know baseball um, that that were good ball players, but not great great ball players or however you want to look at it. I don't know. They were really good. They had a large fan base, um, and they performed well for their teams. Um, you know, guys who have won batting titles. You know, you figure batting titles, MVPs, but that's not a guarantee of, a, of enshrinement into the Hall of Fame, apparently. Um, for you guys who just got here late, here's what uh, I got from John Jabs. We can review this. Pool host, little pool host lot. And then some Gavin Lux. Got really lucky with the Lux lot. I won that bid. So I got like these Gavin Lux rookie cards here. I don't know how he's got, how he's doing or anything like that. Like to be honest with you guys, I, I don't even watch baseball. Um, I don't watch any sports right now because of the politicalness of it all. Um, maybe one day when the rest of the country regains their sanity, um, and we can um, all get back to normal. And you know. Nice Reggie. And Miguel Andahar, rookie. Chapman. So some of the, I don't remember like bidding on all these. Um, so John sometimes throws in goodies. Aaron Judge. He knows I'm a Yankee guy. I know I bid on this Jeter a lot here. So got some Jeters to add to the uh, Jeter mix. So, that's what I got from John. Oh, and I cannot forget about this. i got to put this back on the screen while we just chit-chat about. So, some of you guys may have gotten this because John said he uh, recently got 50 of them. It's his rookie card, The Past is Alive, YouTube channel. And uh, we should read the back, right? i got to get my glasses because it's such small print. All right, so it says, obviously, it's got his, his logo right here. The past is alive. Um, oh, it says, reject the future, embrace the past. Right down here in that very little print. What's it say on his back? Let's see what his stats are and all this stuff. The past is alive, tops, reject the future, embrace the past. Position, YouTube. Okay. Hometown, Greensburg, Pennsylvania. So that's where he grew up. That's not where he lives now. Uh, John Jabs began s savagely tearing into wax packs as a kid back in the late 1980s and was instantly hooked on the joy of chasing after rookie cards. 30 years have passed uh, by and his life is still consumed by 1990 tops and the uh, exhaustive search for the legendary Frank Thomas no name on front. And it's 2016 Tops, the Tops Company, Incorporated All Rights Reserve. Visit Tops.com, Major League Baseball, and copyright with the permission of Major League Baseball Properties. Officially licensed product of Major League Baseball Properties, Incorporated. Visit MLB.com, blah, blah, blah. You two guys can have your own cards made up. So, um, I, had, I had some cards made up of... of um, my daughter-in-law's nephew, when he was a little bit younger, uh, like when he was like five years old, and I had him a couple years of Topps baseball cards made up. Um, so that was pretty cool, and you can do it. You can just write to them, and they'll do it. You just send them, you have to send them the photo, or a, 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 um, back then, you know, five years ago, we had this, I actually had to take a photo and send them a photo. Um, now, you may be able to just electronically do it, because, you know, the world, the world turns. And, um, you know, things get better. Uh, let's see what else. Um, that's about it. Um, oh, I stumbled across these in a box. Uh, another promo card for the promo binder. Actually, there was two of them. Matt Williams and Manny. And they were, they were extras. 
So these will be going up at the end of the month in an auction of some kind. So they'll go in the auction box right now. Oh, the auction box isn't here. So over there. That's all right. We'll just put them where I know they are, right here on the computer. This David Cohn. It's not an error card, but the the gold, the gold tops gold the stamping is missing. So there's no name. It's a David Cohn uh, ghost name on front because you can just make it out. Let's take the key out of the thing. You can just make it out. So it says David Cohn, and then in the white boxed area, you can see the embossing for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. So it's the David Cohn ghost name on front. There it is. Get the reflection. Just right. Normal back. And it's a high number. 720. So that makes it really valuable. Because we know they short printed all the high number cards. Wink, wink. And yeah, that's about it. We kind of went through everything else. Um talked about what I'm going to do Friday and uh, hopefully I can pick up those those uh, sets especially with the all-star fiasco ah uh, yes I, you're exactly right yep I uh, was looking forward to going to a game also this year and probably won't maybe next year when they get their act together things will be better Listen, my team's the Yankees, and they just came into Philly and played a three-game set. So that was my opportunity. I had guys telling me at work, hey, the Yankees are coming to town. The Yankees are coming to town. Um, well, the last time I went, I jinxed the Yankees, and it was the third game of a three-game set. This was a couple years back, and um, they lost that game. So I'm like, well, I guess I just jinxed them. This time I didn't go to any of the games, and the Phillies swept them. Three out of town. Whew go bye so yeah you know, I don't know what to say thanks Alex again hey Lisa how's it going thanks for stopping by appreciate it so um, yeah the auction is going to be the next auction is going to be on the 25th of this month it'll be around 7 p.m. maybe maybe six between six and seven I'll start it up I guess um, right now I have nothing nothing planned nothing on the schedule Accept the auction, so hopefully, you know, everything is uh, cool and we can continue on with that time. Um, where's that Babe Ruth card that I just got? Oh, so Henry S. I don't know, was it Henry S.? No, no, this was RJ. This is RJ. RJ collects sets. Uh, sent me this when I won his trivia uh, question. I answered his trivia question. Uh, a couple of weeks ago and basically I mean his questions aren't that hard guys so I would check him out and usually he has a trivia question plus he just hit a hundred subscribers I believe so um, he's having another giveaway but here's an idea like like other cards that I have I got like I'm trying to put this whole run together <clears throat> and uh, believe me that's there's a lot a lot of cards in this set just the black borders not counting the, the, the red borders, the green borders, the blue borders. You know, so they're cool. They're old photographs. You know, if you don't have room for, for um, like, all these photographs in your house, you know, 8x10s or whatever, these are a pretty cool, pretty cool alternative to that. Rogers Hornsby, Walter Johnson, um, Walter Johnson, Walter Johnson. Rogers Hornsby, Hack Wilson, Rogers Hornsby in blue, and then the babe in blue. So, cool cards. I got, like, literally, I got two binders of those already. Because <clears throat> they produce them for like four, three or four or five years. Because <coughs> uh, Bolton was up. Uh, can we work out a Conseco deal sometime? Um, yeah, but like I don't have any of my Consecos like readily hand like available. They're they're in 
they're all just lumped in boxes so yeah um i'll put up my email there for you there you go alex already beat me to it don't don't worry about that patreon guys i don't even pay attention to that patreon thing so i'm not worried about that um uh, because number one right now i can't even um fulfill any kind of obligations for for patreon you know like donald uh, has patreons i i i don't want to get involved in that if the players are still alive well guess what hold on hold that hold that thought let me get a drink i'll be right back Upstairs. This is like a little box of autos. Okay, I don't want to get wrecked. Little, little autos. So I was going through this shoe box, and this is a literal. This is literally a shoe box. The shoe box. It's amazing people still still do that, right? They actually put cards in shoe boxes, but it's Alden's New England custom boot markers, whatever that is. I have no idea. But I was going through this and I pulled out a Jim Tome. Tome. Now this is that gold ink pen. I'm like, man, that was a big mistake. Getting stuff autographed by uh, he just went D J dot 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 to uh, uh, uh. there it is again I believe his autographs changed from now that he went J dot dot tell me this was when he was still playing in the minor leagues uh, and there's the gold ink pen again really really crappy it's Pedro with the gold ink you guys know my Pedro stories where he refused to sign any more cards for me because, oh, I'm selling them. So. I gave, I actually gave uh, one away to a co-worker of mine who was a big Pedro fan. I gave him one. Um, but anyway, so this is like my autograph box. And since someone said something about that, let's see. I was going through this the other day. There's a lot of, like, Gene Tennis, uh, Dyer Miller, um, Brent Strom, Reggie Smith, Jerry Don Gleaton, Jerry Don, Jerry Don, Reggie Smith, Reggie Smith, Jerry Don, Jerry Don, Jerry Don, uh, Lance McCullough Sr., Sr., Gold Inc. Sr., not that great. Gold Inc. Senior. That's when I was living in Las Vegas. Constipated in Sin City. Uh, Paul Blair. Paul Blair. Paul Blair. Paul Blair. Paul Blair. Paul Blair. Ed Ott. You saw that's always an ink pen. Ed Ott. He signed across his helmet. Really nice to make sure you can see it. Ralph Gar. Little smudgy action going there, but still. Rick. Rennick. There he is again on his rookie card, Rick Rennick. Um, Gene Harris, he was at in Las Vegas. 
any Detroit Tiger autos, Vladdy autos, no Vladdy autos, no, um, no, no, I, I've had luck with any of the new guys, but the reason I got this as soon as I find it, because it, it's, it's, um, an old guy, so there's Lance, again, there's Detroit Lance McCuller Sr. in a Detroit uniform, Lance, Lance in a Tiger uniform, Lance, uh, John Matlack, um, he was a pitching coach for the Las Vegas Stars when I was out there, so I got him to sign this. Uh, Vaughn Joshua, Tommy Agee, Tommy Agee, very nice signature. Um, Luis Salazar, Mike Morgan, Mike Morgan, Mike Morgan, Mike Morgan, Walt Weiss, Tony Armas. Uh, Gene Harris again, Gene Harris, Gene Harris, to doubles, um, Tom Goodwin, Tom Goodwin, Tom Goodwin, dupe, dupe, uh, Chuck, Charlie Manuel, um, uh, the Phillies coach, manager at one time, there he is in a minor league with the uh, Indians, Charlie Manuel, uh, Jeff D'Amico, this actually came out of a pack of cards apparently, numbered, um, Matt, Matt Luke, I think this came out of a pack, even though it's not numbered. Uh, this came out of a pack, these old judge autographs. Oh, yeah, they're numbered. Of 6,000. Yeah. This one's numbered, came out of a pack of 6,000. Came out of a pack of 6,000. This came out of a pack, but not numbered. Whoever Josh Kinney is, got the little stamp on there. Ben Zilberist. This guy, don't know. Buck Coach, don't know. This came out of a pack of Jess Miners. Matt Moses. Here it is. So we're talking about that. And here's this old guy. Marty Marion. And I'm fortunate enough that I got one of his cards that were autographed. In a lot that I bought off of my nephew oh, several years ago now. I'm like, holy crap, look at this old guy, Marty Marion, from 1892 to 1992. Was that guy 100 years old when he died? No. You have to bear with me. This is a Pokemon sleeve, Pokemon card holder sleeve. And here's the back. It wasn't a blank back, can you imagine? So, yeah, Marty Marion is an outstanding proof that not all stars have to be sluggers. In his 10 years with the Cardinals, although he never batted above 280 or hit more than six home runs in a season, he was a consistent hitter, a brilliant fielder, and a team leader, nicknamed the Octopus. So he must have been a great, must have been a great fielder. If your nickname is the Octopus, that means like. You're seven times better than the human vacuum cleaner. Brooks Robinson, right? All right, let's check the chat. Cards in my car with Arpar Sada. How's it going? Uh, man, I love these. Uh, let's see. Um, what else? And then I got some hard, uh, hard to Like Richie Allen. I'm. This one's. A, these are in-person ones. Richie Allen. Richie Allen. Richie Allen. Richie Allen. Richie Allen. 75 Mini, Richie Allen, Richie Allen, 75 Regular. That's a Kmart 20th Anniversary. It's funny. They use the same photo for um, 70 and 72 card. You know, so look at that. So this is a 72 design, and that is the actual 72 card, or 70 card, 68. And then, oh, oh. Scott's not here, is he? Uh, I don't think Scott's here. Okay. Scott, Scott will have a freaking heart attack if he sees this. Alvaro Espinosa, um, Reindeer Studios. Scott is a huge Alvaro Espinosa fan. So too bad he's not here to see this. There's Espinosa. There's Alvaro in gold. There's Alvaro. There's Alvaro gold winner card with gold
more gold. And a Richie Allen. But that's a nice stack of Espinosas. Autos. Bet Scott's not here to see that. Let's see what else do I have in here. There we go. Big names in here. No more. Here's another Richie Allen. How about some Nettles action? Nettles. Again, these are all in person. So I I grabbed one of every Nettles card that I had at the time and took them down to the signing because it was one free, as many autographs as you wanted, and I loaded up. It was like 35 bucks or something like that, and I loaded up. Dick Williams, he was there. These are all in person. Bobby Shantz is a T tank. Bobby Shantz, sorry. Shantz, it looks Shantz, but it's actually Shantz, guys, just so you know. I find well, I was gonna find all this past card show, but I didn't go. He was he was there signing. But these are TTMs to his house. TTM Richard Petty numbered card one ninety nine or one oh nine of three ninety nine. Yeah, one oh nine of three ninety nine. Richard Petty in his white marker. Richard. Richard Silver ninety six. Classic cards. This is Richard and Kyle on the same card. Very nice. Sent to Richard first. Once Richard signed, then I knew I can get Kyle's. Got Kyle's easy. They're both easy. They're easy gets. I sent to Richard once and Kyle twice. Here's an electric diamond version of this card. 95, whatever upper deck. Oh, it's an upper deck. So, don't have many non-baseball ones. Tim McCarver, Tim McCarver. These are all in-persons. Tony Taylor's in-persons. So, like if they're Phillies or former Phillies or something like that, they're, they're most likely in-persons. Because back in the day, they would come around to the car dealerships and they would uh, sign autographs at the car dealerships. So, here's a uh, Frank Tanana. This came out of a... Oh, no, nah, this might have been a TTM, but I got it in a trade. Got this in a trade with someone, I think. That's a little thing maybe that he hands out. How about Ken Griffey Sr.? Two of those. Old school with the pen. It even dry, started to dry up on him. Um, Steve Sachs. Steve Sachs, Piazza's buddy, Eric Karos, Karos, that was a ring person, Ron Say, all faded, uh, John Wetland, check the chat, there is a, a oh, there's a cure for this season, wow, well, I could watch this all day, or oh, Espinosa stinks, well, I know, but Scott likes him, so, Espinosa played for a lot of teams, I think. How about some Bob Boone? Again, these are all in-persons because he was a Philly. I grabbed all the Phillies, all the cards I had of him. Go down and get him to sign them. So the gold were in one time, and then the blues was another time when he came around. Larry Boa. Larry Boa. Uh, this was an eBay purchase. Luis Tiant. Uh, in person, the late Tug McGraw, Frank DePino, that might have been um, a trade or something. Um, Lynn Jones, never heard of him, but yeah. Larry Sorensen. So these were these were all um, trades that I got or uh, with from my boss and stuff like that. Cause my boss was a big is a big TTMer. 
Here's an older one. It's an ink pen. Gene Richard. This one I bought off of eBay, and I haven't heard anything about the guy. Anthony Volpe. So let's hope he does a thing. It's 20 bucks, so I had to get it. Volpe. But I haven't heard anything about him since. Hear more about what's his name? Dominguez or whatever the heck his name is. I don't know. The, the other kid. The $5 million baby. Bill Verdon. came in of a pack. Congratulations, you have just received an autograph 1995 Five Sport Autograph Edition card. Steve Gibraltar, yeah, Gibraltar. There's some more of these old judge cards that are signed. Here's a numbered sign, came out of a pack. One of 7,500. And he signed 2,100. Got a nice little stamp on the back here saying, oh, you got an autograph. Let's see. Giovanni Gallardo, that came in a pack. Came in a pack. This came in a pack. Got Ricky Botelico, 8,050 signed cards. Crazy. Scott Brosius. Uh, Gorman Thomas pulled out of. Uh, no, I didn't. This was an eBay purchase. Somehow I got that. I didn't buy. I didn't uh, pull that one. I don't know how I got it. I don't even know why. Because uh, like he's not my guy. I don't know. Raul Abanez. At one point this was five bucks. Oh no! At one point it was thirty bucks. Knocked down to five. I don't know. Sid Bream card autographed. Um, Brandon Drury. I picked these. This one up while I was on vacation in South Carolina a couple years ago. A guy was selling them at the flea market. Uh, this one came out of a pack of Dunruss. And it's Jay Gibbons. Number two. It's number 26 of 75. This one I pulled out of a pack of Fleer Ultra. It's uh, At the time it was a nice one. J.D. Drew. But now it's, no, it's nothing. This uh, this came in a box of a lot that I bought. This um, Yankee. Never heard of him. Paul Blair's or I have a couple more of those. Those were in persons. Uh, Lomborg I got in a trade with my boss. This came out of a box I believe. David Need. Maybe I'm wrong on that because it's not numbered. Mickey Hatcher. Any Mickey Hatcher fans out there? Frank B. Rippin, Chris Bolton, would you do a trade for the Vladdy Auto? There you go. Um, how about Mickey Hatchers? I got a ton of Mickey Hatchers. These are all in persons. You got the big glove, big glove on this bat. He's known for having a couple pictures of big gloves. So these were all done in persons at different times. Hence the different color of inks. Blue, black, red, gold. But I took one of every Mickey Hatcher card I had, Future Stars, and had him sign one. Every one that I had at the time. I have even more Mickey Hatchers than Alvaro Espinosa's because we're still going with the Hatchers. Big love, dupe. Ooh, we're done there. How about some Pete Smith action? And let's see. Do we have any big names? This came out of South Carolina. This is Brett Krill. Don't, never heard of him. Clyde Osteen. These are in persons. I think he did a card show out in Vegas when I was out there. got him and Von Joshua to sign the same one um, they may have come into the stadium with uh, the Albuquerque Dukes and I got them both to sign at the same time Osteen Osteen Clyde Osteen uh, 
of some Mad Dog, the Madlock. You can tell that's old. That's the ink pen. Bill Russell's. More Matlacks. Like I said, he was the pitching coach for the um, Las Vegas Stars when I was out there. More Vaughn Joshua's. This is an autograph relic of some, it's number two, <laughs> of some kid, auto jersey, who's this kid, Sean Coyle, I don't know, how about this one, uh, Fleer Ultra came out of a pack, Carlos Pena, very nice signature, beautiful signature, like not really sloppy at all, number two, 150, uh, this came out of a box, pack, Brooke, Brooks Kishnick, Kishnick, there we go, Blah. he was a big time, uh, you know, rising, uh, like, prospect, and, yeah, bomb, more Joshua, Dave Staten, he played for the, uh, Las Vegas Stars, and I was living there, Chris Chambliss, one of my Yankee favorites, this I traded my, uh, boss for, uh, this Jim Perry, not in the Hall of Fame, brother to Gaylord, right? Um, and he's got an MVP. No, he's got a World Series vict win, and I think his brother n did never have a World Series win, but his brother's in the Hall of Fame. Steve Yeager, Joe Necro, brother to Phil, Chris Beyer, another Tommy Agee making the catch in the 69 World Series game number three. Ozzy Gann, Reggie Smith, Greg Maddox's brother, Mike Maddox, Sparky, another really good Yankee, even though he's in Red Sox uniform and the White Sox uniform, uh, Doc Ellis, Bill White, one of the first autographs I got was this Bill White, and along with one of the first ones was this very Faded, worn out, Sal Bando. Who's this? Ron Bloomberg. He was my guy. Um, after Mercer and, and all those guys were gone, Munson um, was gone. Um, Bloomberg was uh, there before, right before Munson. Uh, no. About the same time. Um, but... Bloomberg, I just, like, he was a big lefty, and he was, a, you know, big home run hitter. And his claim to fame, right, is he's the very first designated hitter in Major League Baseball. The first one. That's his claim to fame. That is it. Mitchell Page, these are in persons. Uh, Kerry Robinson, this, I think, came from my, my nephew when I bought his collection, because they're in Pokemon cards. Uh, these were in persons. Dave Opperman was in persons. Uh, Brad comments, comments. These are all in persons as well at different times. Um, Tyler Green. That must have been my nephew's because it's in a Pokemon. Um, Riggleman. He was the star's manager back then. So. I was able to get him at like all the home games. Guy Varsho, doesn't his son play now? Mike Heath. Mike Heath, you know, there's just. A lot of these guys, I got them in there in the minor leagues and they came through Vegas. Like all these Henry Rodriguez's and stuff like that. They were all coming through Vegas, playing in the minor leagues for. You know, the Astros or the uh, Dodgers or the Indians or whoever was coming through. I was snatching them up. After the game, until Pedro ruined it and accused me of selling them. Well, if I was selling them, why do I still have so many of them? Yeah, doorknob. And they're like, no. And I said, you know, like, you're nobody. I'm only getting your autograph because your brother's in the major leagues. I was hoping to get them both on that that same upper deck card where they're on there together. But never ran into um, his 
taller brother, older brother, bigger brother. And the Thatcher played for the Stars. And there he is, Jim Thatcher. Uh, Rick Rennick again, 72. Rick Rennick. Check the chat real quick, see what I'm missing. Chris B, did you see my comment? Make sure you check out. Thanks. Thanks again, Alex. Drew Blackwell, very nice. It was AJ's. Put up your link, Lisa. Yeah, Lisa, put up your link if you remember how to do that. The Ozzy Guillen, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, the stars was a uh, quite a few of their players, but um, my nephew had a bunch of these Tommy Hers came in his collection when I bought them. Um, Marty Barrett, he was a resident living in Las Vegas, or that's where he grew up anyway. I think he still maintained his home in Las Vegas, and they don't list it on this card. No, here he's living in Mass, it says here, but on some of his cards it says Las Vegas. Born in Cali. Mass. Mass. Oh, well, trust me, he lived in Vegas. He had a home in Vegas. You'll see it on one of these cards, I'm sure. This says where he was born. Marty Barrett. Got some Glenn Abbott action. Got a bunch of his. There's your Detroit's. Glenn Abbott. A lot of these are nobodies, you know what I mean? They were, like I said, minor leaguers coming up, so I was just snatching them up. Here's, he's actually on one of his Huntsville stars. That's for um, the athletics minor league. Tom Lampkin. He was a guy who you were lucky to get him to sign. I guess I got lucky quite a few times. He usually snuck out a different way. And they come out of the player's tunnel. Mike Aldretti. Adam Peterson. He was on the Stars. There he is in the Stars card. Another Stars card. Another Las Vegas Stars card. Um, this might be a lot of Tommy Hers here. Because they're in Pokemon. Sleeves. So yeah, Tommy Hers, my nephew, must have ran into him and got a bunch of Tommy Hur autographs. Tommy Hur has one or two batting titles, I think, doesn't he? Let's see who else. Paul Ferris again with the stars. Adam Peterson was a star. There's some more Steve Chitrins. Bo, Bo Allred, Terry Bross, Las Vegas Stars, this guy here, Rafael Valdez with the Stars, Jeremy uh, Hernandez with the Stars, more Stars cards. Let's get into some good guys. How about some Bill Madlock? Guys that actually made it to the show. Madlock, 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 Madlock. Hey, he's in a Detroit. Detroit uniform. Madlock, Madlock. Known for being a pirate, though. Dodgers. Giants. He must have come up with the Giants. 
It says Rangers. Cubs. Then Giants. Wow. I was way off. Detroit again. There's a cubby. And it says Rangers and then minor league, so. A lot of mad dog. Giants. And then it switches over to this Reggie Jefferson character for like a bazillion cards. Mark Nudson for like a bazillion cards. More Jim Vatchers. Bunch of his. There he is in his Las Vegas Stars card. Like going in the outfield, catching a ball. Not even, wasn't even like tall enough to rob him. Like going over the wall, he had to stand up there. Like, ah, oh, look, a diving catch. Posing. Dave Island. I think he ended up being a pitching coach for the Yankees or a bullpen coach or something like that. More Bo Alreds. Here we go. Oh, I thought we were done with Bill Madlock. We're not Madlock. Oh, we are now. Bill Russells. More Bill Russells. I think I tried to get one of every one of their cards when I went to this one mass signing that they had. John Matlock was the pitching coach. There he is. His Las Vegas Stars uniform. And there he is there. Playing days. A lot of Matlocks. Matlocks. With the Mets. There he is on a all-time Rangers card. Uh, 1986. More Tommy Hers. Oh, one more Tommy Her. Madlocks. Madlock. So you see, we went to a lot of games with me and my, my boys, so we got a, a lot of opportunities to get these guys to sign their cards. There he is on his 72 rookie card. Buzz Capra and Leroy Stanton. And Rick Dempsey, that was part of my nephew's lot when I bought it off of him because I stuck them in Pokemon. That's all I had at the time. Brosius Roy Smalley Jr. How about a Bo Belinsky? Met him at a card show around Vegas. Mickey Rivers. John Cruck. I should compare that to the Cruck card I found in the in this lot. Dave Hollins, Larry Anderson, Dyer Miller again, Bob Skinner, Dyer Miller, and more Tommy Hers, like a ton of Tommy Hers. My nephew. Uh, had a ton of them. And that is, I think we already looked at these. Yeah, we looked at these. If not, they're, yeah, Jim Batcher. Jeff Mutis. That's that is my like TTM um, IP in person autographs um, and or trade autographs and obviously the Tommy Harris I picked up from my nephew. But so even though it looks like there's a lot here, it's like really not a lot. I think I I have under a thousand um, autograph cards. Um, so I think the last count was like 900. This isn't all of them, but this is the uh, like the low tier players. Um, the other ones are upstairs in a box somewhere. Because I still haven't come across my Griffey Jr. that I pulled out of a pack. 
along with uh, my A-Rod. I pulled that out of a pack. Um, actually, out of a box. I bought minor league boxes and got lucky and pulled them out. Like back-to-back -back years, I think. Or, and I know it was like back-to-back -back boxes because I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, buy a whole lot of minor league boxes back then. Just wasn't, you know, worth it. And at the time, Griffey was nobody. A Rod was nobody. So um, you, know, you had to wait for them to mature before you could say, "Oh, look at that." So for 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 the newer people here, I'm going to give you a, uh, a quick um, tour of the room again, because I have some new people here that have never never seen uh, the inside of my uh, studio. Here. So why not? So let's do that. After I clean up this mess, because I made a mess. Now they're no longer organized. I have to go back through them. Straighten them out. So you can do that with these because they're in the hard the hard case, it's not going to damage the corners. The penny sleeves, I know that's a different story. You wouldn't want to. And if they're not protected at all, you definitely don't want to go onto your desk or whatever. I've seen people do that and like. What are you doing? You could be wrecking the corners. Right. Almost done. There you go. I think I got them all policed up. Nope. The Alvaro's are out. Alvaro is Pelosa. Richie Allen's and the petties are still out. I gotta get the petties. Richard and the king. The king. Richard Petty. Alright, so that was that. The autograph shoebox. I said I have more, but they're there are other places. I have my mantle one that's in the display case here. I have my Maris that's in the display case. Um, oh, the tour of the room. So, whoever's here, hey CVC, how's it going? So, whoever's still here and you have not seen the, uh, the room, sorry about my finger there. Um, let's do this. Let's move my picture now. Put me back down here. Bingo. So, there's 95 5,000 pound boxes right there from well just off the floor they're they're like six inches off the floor I got a two by six down there keeping them off the floor and then I've got like all these um, 800 count boxes um, that I still got to finish going through because I don't think I went through all of them to find out if they are complete sets or not 3200 count boxes here and some 5,000 counters there Got some tubes with uncut sheets in. That's my mantle uh, framed, not autographed photo though. Some 5,000 counters there. Now the number, the letters on there, F is for FLIR, D is Dunruss, T is for TOPS, UD, you get it, you get the picture, upper deck, um, and S is for SCORE. So when you see them around the room, that's what that stands for. Now if you see an SRT, that means that box needs to be sorted. So I have a lot over here that still needs sorting like those two stacks O is for others it could be basketball hockey non-sports cards in the O's that's like a pretty good stack of O's there a whole bunch of sorts All right. and for the most part except for the end over there on the top they're 5,000 count boxes all the way down all the way down to the floor again I got over here I got a 2x4 uh, keeping everything up. I built a little 
little rack to keep them up now. Hold on a second. Let me. That's my messy desk. Move my chair. to the tour and this wire isn't long enough and if I found that if I unplug it I lose everything I can't plug it back in sorry about the shaking don't knock over the chippers cards all right so this goes all the way down those are 5,000 count boxes to the top uh, like 24 high like those are 19 because the uh, the garage door railing is uh, track is in the way, so I can go 19 high there, and then these are 20 on up to 23, 24 high maybe, all the way wraps around. Then I got overflow, overflow pack stacked up here. Uh, some starting lineups. This is my display case that I bought, um, 10 bucks. Light everything works. I just don't have it plugged in. There's lights that run along the front here that project light down onto there. Some of my shoe boxes um, that I've been putting together uh, with different players in and just stacks of other player cards, stuff like that. There's my Montana autograph uh, certified through PSA, and then I just put his rookie card or second year card. I'm not sure if that's rookie or second. I think it's his rookie, but anyway, it's um, maybe it's not a rookie. But anyway, it's in a you know one inch thick. Um, there's Frank Thomas with the name on the front, unfortunately. And then there's a second shelf, first shelf, I should say. But anyway, um, there's the vending machine. It actually works. I just only ran it. I should have just rented it because. <laughs> I only ran it on like the first day. Uh, we bought it. We made sure most of them worked. There were two two spots that didn't work, and there was there's like um, three, five on the top and three on the bottom. So um, you know we would put money in, and then it would have people select uh, what they wanted. We would roll the dice or whatever, and then see what came up for them, or they could have. It was for the grand opening of the studio. Now we get to the wall of wax. Um, but anyway, so there's some of my rack packs hanging up there uh, behind some uh, blister packs as well. Um, and this is the wall of wax. It's not all wax anymore because I stuck a lot of wax down under here too. Um, a lot of these, are the boxes have been opened up already. The ones on the bottom have not been opened up. And this is the wall of wax. I got half a case of the FLIR 91 FLIR. I got a full case of 91 on the upper deck, high number. Um, I had a case of the low numbers too, but I opened up a lot of that just trying to get the, the damn Jordan. It was like one in every three boxes. so. It was hard to pull out, and then just a bunch of wax that I bought over the last uh, year or so, year and a half, uh, unopened wax. And then these are some factory sets, some hand collated and factory tops. The rest are down here, like Dunlop's Fleer, Gore. There's a couple upper deck there. Um, so I just added that '90 Bowman there. I thought it had. I thought I had more 90 Bowmans up there, but apparently uh, I didn't have any 90. I got 191, and I got like four 89 Bowmans. So the 89 Bowmans, the two yellow ones and the yellow and green ones, um, have the Griffey Jr. rookie cards in. And they haven't been opened up, but that's what comes in there. That's why I bought them. And then the 91 comes with the Frank Thomas. 
Now the Frank Thomas, you also have a chance of uh, getting the Frank Thomas rookie error card, which I have one of, and that has the uh, the back has Dan Gladden's uh, stats and names and stuff on it, not uh, Frank Thomas. So that was an interesting find there. But it, so you guys know it's out there. That's in my I have that in my um, my error binder book, which I'll show that with show that with you guys one day again. And whoo, that was it. That was the tour. Now. Um, the next question is probably how many cards do I have for the new people? Hey, oddball cards. Uh, you should see my Conseco binder. It's cool. All right. Yeah, well, you should do a uh, video on it there, Chris. I thought my daddy had a lot of cards. Two million. You have like ten times that. Well, no. I, I've only got um, maybe 2.8, not, not quite three million cards. Now, outside of this room, I have like another million cards in the house that I've, you know, I've got a, I don't know. Uh, I built this, I converted my garage for the sole purpose of getting 400 boxes of cards in here. And my wife, she says, you're never going to do it. And it doesn't help that I keep buying these collections too and stuff. That doesn't help. Um, she says, you're never going to do it. You're never going to do it. I'm like, I'm going to do it. Don't challenge me. Don't. Don't you challenge me, because I will do it just to spite you, woman. Yeah, she was right. I didn't get them all in here. I still have, a, like, a million-plus cards in the house. So, um, you know, one day I'll take a video of the upstairs. Uh, my, so my studio used to be uh, my, my youngest son, who got married, moved out, got married. Um, I took over his bedroom and I turned it into my my uh, studio but I still had like two million cards throughout the house so now with bringing these down here I still have a bunch up there and I do sorting up there too like I'll go up there because this is all done on a laptop and my my um, my my main computer is upstairs in that room. That's where I do like all my gaming or I'll, I'll stream people's videos from up there um, until I fall asleep in the chair. Usually that's what happens. I'll be like... <sighs> and then my wife will look in and she'll turn out the light. Sometimes she'll wake me up. Sometimes she won't. She'll be like, eh, I'll let him sleep and wake up with a sore neck or something. Yeah. But usually like when she... As soon as she turns out the lights, I usually like wake up and then she stands looking at me like, Oh, did I wake you up? I'm like, no, I wasn't sleeping. She said, hell you weren't. Your eyes were out. No, it's always fun. So, Lisa, your dad still has those cards or no? Oh, had. You said had. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, the problem with, um, by the way, for your new, new guys here, here it is. He didn't autograph it, so you're right. Whoever brought it up, he, he kind of messed up. He sent them out without autographing them and numbering them, you know, through 50 because he said he had 50 of these that he had ordered. That's uh, The Past is Alive. So anyone who bought into his uh, last auction probably uh, got got something added like that two years, hopefully. John's a great guy. you got to give him credit for being just an all-around great guy. He also sent me... If you guys were watching him when he had his April Fool's Day, right? Where he was doing the search for the uh, no name. Well, apparently he has a couple of these. But he sent me one uh, in the mail like within a couple of days of that video opening. I'm like, holy moly, look at this. I got a no name. Uh, I, of course, I know it's fake because it's so much darker. The colors and the cards a glossy card. I think it's not even uh, close. But at first glance, like, a lot of people were fooled on April Fool's Day when he did that. I was almost caught, but I'm like, wait, it's it's too dark. It doesn't, it doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Why is it so dark? And that was the giveaway, but still it was fun. I mean, it was lots of fun. By the way, I've been saving up gum, so when I do run into John, um, I'm going to give him his pick. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, pick one, anyone, whatever you want to. 
chew on. I mean, some of them look pink. Some of them look really brown. So these are from packs that I've been opening up just within the last month. You know what? Why not? Let's open up some more packs while we're here. So, put cow ripped in the underground thing. We already know that these are not going to be, because I bought them off the same guy. They're not going to be desert uh, shield cards. So, we don't have to worry about that. We can um, open up those. We can open up these looking for a mantle. If we get a mantle autograph, that would be great. I'd take it. I was constantly being outbid on these cards when they um, would come up on eBay. So that's why I bought the one that I bought. And I outright bought it for 350 bucks, but I was always getting outbid on the score ones. So let's see what we get here. Davey Johnson, not the manager. Or Select. Hey, there's a Hall of Famer. Followed by Big Hurt, Hall of Famer. Welch, Hall of Famer. A Hall of uh, Very Good Player, right? This was a good pack back in the day. Trivia. Those are a pain in the butt, but what are you going to do? Terry Leach, Xavier, and Edgar Diaz. But the middle of that pack was really good. I mean, we pulled down three Hall of Famers and a Hall of Very Good. <clears throat> Let's do another one. Why not? I eat gum from uh, 89 and it just turns into, yeah, it turns into this syrup. It turns right, right back into the syrup. Fedo, Fernando Valenzuela, Fedo. That's how he signed, that's how he signed my 8x10 autograph that he sent me. He just signed it Fedo, not even Fernando, just Fedo. Jose Viscano. Doesn't look good. Maurice Vaughn. My mama calls me Maurice. Man, went from very good to very crappy pack. And this, these are off center cut. Look at the blue trim on the very edge of the top of the cards. That happened in some of the other packs I opened up too. Alright, we got a couple more. Come on, Mick. Come on, Mick. Alvin Davis. Billy Ripken. There it is. The Cobra. Hall of Famer. Billy's brother. Kevin Brown. Larry Anderson. Rico Bronia. And again, same uh, blue trim at the top. John Allrood. Hey, there you go, Alex. Strawberry. And Big Ben. Last pack of this stuff. Now right, we're starting off with a Doc Gooden. Oh, Doctor. Doc Gooden. Will the Thrill. Oh, look. He's got, uh, what was that? Um, the Bat and the Natural Wonder Boy. Is that what he called this bat? With the Lightning Bolt. What's this Lightning Bolt? That was made from a tree that was struck by lightning. Hey, Frank Thomas. But all these corners are dinged up. The pack got dinged. So, Ken Griffey Sr. Ding. Bernard Gilkey. Uh, and whoops, trivia Chet Lemon, Eric Chow that's that no mantle never seen one pulled um, the assumption is you can pull one from a pack I don't know that's why we buy them I was buying these things by the box a couple years back off of uh, eBay whenever I saw them I'd be buying them I think I bought a case at one time 
and opened up every one and did not find a mantle. I was a little disappointed. I'm like, are you kidding me? 20 boxes and not one autograph. <sighs> but that was the days before I just decided, you know, I'm just going to have to out and out buy it, I guess. Trash. All right. Find the Nolan Ryan autograph. Did we really find the Nolan? I thought we had, uh, I thought we had to find the Hanks. Oh, no, Nolan's the one. Nolan's the one, yes, yes, that you have the chance of getting the uh, Michael Jordan short print, SP, SP1, out of the uh, Find the Nolan's, not the, um, the high number, only in the low numbers. The high number had Deion Sanders. All right. So let's see, are we going to get lucky? Oh, who's our thing? Seattle Mariners. Shout out to Donald Blumdahl. He was here earlier. Big, huge Mariners fan. Just got back from his vacation at Yellowstone. Glad to see he wasn't eaten up by any grizzlies or um, run over by any bison. American bison. There you go, Tom Glavin. Ron Gant. I hear he's uh, signing cards now. TTM. Don't know what he's charging, though, but... A few TTMers out there. Uh, David Cohn. And we're flipping out here with the upper decks. Why not? David Wells is skinny there. That's a skinny David Wells. The Wild Thing, Mitch Williams. And look, it's John Allroot again. Shout out to Alex. Over at Jay's Mix. If you guys haven't subbed him up you might want to go over and give him a couple subs he helps me out on this channel a lot by linking my 1000 subscriber um video that we're going to have a drawing for at the end of the month the end of this month if we're still at over a thousand subscribers which we're just clinging on we're just clinging on um we topped out at like a thousand and six we're Dropped down to 1,004. We're back up to 1,005. Thanks to um, Lisa, who kind of brought us back up to 1,005 uh, when she subbed up. But anyway, Dr. Gooden. Oh, doctor. Ron Gant. Belinda. Mackie Sasser. Cardinals. This guy pitches with both hands, by the way. He's ambidextrous. Really. That glove is switches over. He can pitch with either hand. Well, he could. Red Sox. Ooh. Hiss. How about uh, Don Paul? This guy's got two first names. Hey, we got Junior, though. That's a good one. All right? Very nice. Look at that. The kid. Nice. Very nice. We pulled Junior. I don't think I have that one in my binder, so we got a no, new card for the binder right here. Flipping out, yeah, with the upper deck. Alright, we got another one here. So I paid two bucks each for these packs. We're starting off with Orion, so we're not going to get an autograph um, in this pack. The the Ryan autograph is on the final card, the cartoonish type card. It won't be on any of these other cards in the set, just so you know. It'll be the last card in the set of the number. Uh, well, we've seen him before. Rookie card, Dave Hansen. It's a Mark Witten with... I didn't know he was a switch hitter, by the way, too. Throws right says bats right but I've seen him where he's batting left-handed too so I don't know Corey Snyder was a big bat back then the Royals Lenny Dykstra what a big change from then to now Lenny Dykstra now is whew, you don't want to run into him in an alley somewhere you would probably be asking you to bump some money off you Guy had millions of dollars, signed million dollar contracts. Dante Bichette has two cards in this year. 
um, one in the high number set as well. Father to Beau Bichette, but y'all knew that. Also father to Dante Bichette Jr. Who, ah, last I heard was um, in the Yankees organization, minor league organization. Andy Van Slyke. Phil Plantier, yeah, he was uh, supposed to be something. Didn't turn out to be something. Something of a bust, I guess, right? Mariners again. Hey, we got Sammy Sosa. And this is um, technically a second year card. Came up with the Rangers, White Sox, then White Sox, and then because look, it's our boy Alvaro Espinosa. Shout out to Scott over at Reindeer Studios. All right. Well, we're not having much luck with these, but it is what it is, right? Everyone can't be a winner. Sorry, just catching up. Your collection is. Wow, dang, not enough time to go through those. No, I've been through I've been through them all, though. I mean, they're marked what's in there, kind of. Like, they're tops in there. There shouldn't be any other manufacturer in those boxes. That's that's the first sort that I've that I done on these cards. And second sort is, I don't know. Well, there's our Ryan card for this pack. So it won't be autographed either. We've got a Gilkey. With this dirty Sanchez. We got Bo though. Bo knows baseball. That's for sure. And we got Chris Sabo. Royal sticker. So we're only getting the same couple stickers. Mark Parent. Kyle Morris. Hall of Famer there. Carlton Fisk. I think he ended up playing more years with the White Sox than he did with the Red Sox. There's Mickey Hatcher with the big glove. I think uh, Pudge ended up playing, having more years as a White Sox than a Red Sox. A lot of people find that hard to believe. Because he's, you know, he's known for his feud with um, Thurman Munson. Um, I never liked him because um, he was always competing with Thurman Munson, like those guys are always um, in it for the starting catcher of the All-Star game, and back then you got one vote. You get one vote, not like today where you go vote 15 times a day with your phone. It's like, what? Back then when you got a million votes, that was a big deal, you know? That was a big deal. I got One guy gets a million votes, it was a big deal, right? Now you get a million votes in one day because the guy I can vote 15 times if I want. It's like nee, 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 15 times. Back then you had to get the paper. You had to color in the little circles like you're taking a test, right? Then you had to mail it in with the stamp and everything. Man, talk about you know you only get one vote. I right, did that. Here it is. Not like today where you get to vote your ass off. I still voted for every Yankee the last couple of years. But yeah, nope, Yankee, nope, Yankee, nope, Yankee. Just like I did when I was a kid. Had to be a Yankee. So when Fisk would beat Munson out for the uh, starting catcher, I was always upset. I was always pissed. Bo Jackson again. Very nice. Mike Socha. Paul Molitor. There you go. Nice. Hall of Famer. Yep. And just like every other Munson fan, and when he crashed his plane, that was it, man. It was like like the worst day ever. You can imagine. It's like shock. Like, no, what? No, 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 no. But yeah, after a while, you get used to the, to the Yankees always so, sewing a number on their sleeve for like the Yankee passing away. Putting the 
stripe on their sleeves. A lot of great Yankees. A lot of great ball players passed away, though, obviously. But if it's your team, you know, you, you feel that sense of loss more. Mickey Mantle, I can tell you guys, I've told you guys my Mantle story. Um, living in Vegas. He was doing the circuit. There's a Kevin Brown. Uh, he was doing the circuit, right? Autograph circuit, card shows, Hall of Famer, uh, Barry Larkin. And he was charging $57. I'm like, man, that's a lot of money. And I am I was in the Air Force, so I wasn't making a lot of money. And, um, it, and just like today, man, family should come first over any kind of cards, right? Family should be first. So I... I I decided I wasn't going to pay that $57. I'm, you know, I'll get him another time. And I'll, I'll tell you a story after this that, you know, as a kid. So I was an adult, you know. Um, but I had a family, young family, a couple babies on the, you know, in diapers. Uh, my boys are like 18 months apart. So they're not quite Irish twins. Irish twins are like 12 months apart out here. So, but anyway, um, so I couldn't afford that 57 bucks, and uh, so I just told myself, well, I, I'm just not going to get it. I'm not going to pay it. I refused to pay that $57, um, even though if I had it, I would have, <laughs> but I didn't. So um, I'm like, you know what, I'll get him another time, but I, I had the same thing when I was a kid, when I was a kid, um, Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, and a bunch of other ones like, I think, um, I think, you know, I can't remember all of them, I just remember those two, um, but I think um, Duke Schneider, I mean a lot of these good Hall of Famers were going to be playing in a golf tournament up near Bloomberg, PA. <clears throat> I don't remember the name of the course because I was just a kid, but... We're getting all psyched up to go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. All right. My mom's like, all right. We're gonna. We'll take you up there and we'll see if you can get some autographs and stuff like that. We'll drive all the way up, and it was a long drive. It was a couple hour drive. But um, it rained or something, and we never, we never left. We never went, and I was like, you know, disappointed then. And I said, well, all right. Well, you know, there'll be another time to get it. Another time to get it. And another time came around, and I didn't have the 57 bucks, and, I, and I'm like, oh, I, uh, no, I'm not going to, I refuse to pay $57. It's the principal, you know. Um, and never had another opportunity to get his autograph, and he passes away, and, you know, that's the end of that. So I ended up paying $357. We just rounded up to $7. It was like Maybe with taxes and shit, it was three hundred, three hundred and fifty-seven dollars. All right. So here's Cal Ripken. You saw this Henderson, right? Triple exposure card, Ricky Henderson, Cal Ripken. Right behind the Cal Ripken is the um, <clears throat> Henderson Brock card when Ricky Henderson surpassed Lou Brock. For, as the all-time base stealing king, and Ricky went on to crush Lou Brock's all-time stolen base record. He had like almost 1,500 stolen bases, I believe, 1,400 and change. Well, at the time, this was the record: 939 stolen bases. Now, Ricky almost, almost came within a couple hundred of doubling that, right? But the uniqueness of this one is. The date's missing. This is the error one. There's no date there. If it ever focuses. If it ever focuses. Come on, focus. But anyway, there's supposed to be a date right there. It's focusing on something else in the background. I gotta really just... There we go. So the date's missing. There's supposed to be a date between their fingers. Not there. So. That will go in the auction pile. And we'll auction that baby off too. That goes with those. And that's it. So, got one pack left. 
No Michael Jordan SP card yet, but we did get some nice ones. Check the chat real quick. I peed my pants when I met Tom Petty. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> Tom Petty was great, though. I love his music, you know. It's amazing how much we don't appreciate people until they're gone. You know what I mean? It sucks that we're that way. For the most part. Not everyone's that way, obviously. Um, but I was married back in 95, but only for three years. Okay. I was smart. I had no kids, and I am no longer married. There you go. Um, well, I've been married. I've been married uh, now. Oh, this year is going to be... 40 years? Yeah. Yeah, 40 years. Um, this October 24th. October 24th of this year will be 40 years I've been married. So, yeah. Only married once. Now it's too late. I mean, crap. She'll get half my cards. And then she'll sell them for a buck a piece and, you know, make a million bucks. Actually, they're not worth, well, maybe on average, because if you sell some of the good ones. But. Hey, Lead Collectibles, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Hello, I saw him in Bonnaroo right before he died. Okay. So, here you go, guys. Um, a really nice guy to TTM. And I haven't TTM'd them in a couple of years now. Mainly with COVID and all that going on. You know, um, I don't know if he even continued to sign or not. I haven't seen anyone else. Bobby Richardson, Impact Player. This is a book that I bought off him. And he only charged me 10 bucks, And he paid for the shipping to ship it to me. But I TTM'd him several times over a year. We kind of corresponded, so... Um, Here's one of the, uh, the cards I got from him. I read the book. It's a great book. It talks about talks about Mandolin in his book. It talks about a lot of stuff. Um, oh, this. So, yeah. These are my other racing cards. This is um, Mario Andretti. Uh, he's a um, he's from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Um, I grew up near Nazareth, and so he was like kind of the, the local nice guy. Went trick or treating to his house when I was a kid. My aunt, who who lived near him and his family, um, and um, my cousin, um, her son is an IndyCar driver now. He came up through the ranks and he raced for Andretti Racing and stuff like that. So we've seen these. I've seen these actually on other people's channels and stuff like that. Um, but Bobby gave me this. And I asked him a question. I have my thing here. He signed it on the back for me, Bobby Richardson. It's a beautiful signature. Um, he sent me this. This is one of his cards he has made up. But he signed it for me. I sent him the 62 tops. He signed it for me. I sent him a bunch of cards. He signed them all for me. I paid him five bucks per card. You know, uh, He doesn't have a fee that I know of. Um, but... Um, so I said I have other autographs upstairs in boxes that are more uh, of the more important ones. Like I got several of his, I got several uh, Bobby Shaunts. So here's, um, um, I asked him, first time I wrote him, I asked him about Mickey Mantle. He told me, and that letter's upstairs, it's in, um, it's in a, uh, a binder. But here, I kept this one in the book. And I asked him this, this time when I wrote him, this was back in 2019, um, I asked him about Bobby Shantz, and he says, uh, Bobby Shantz is um, one of my closest friends and a great teammate. Um, and I got hot chocolate or something that's spilled on there or something happened. And said, so, glad to send the book your way and hope you like it. When you come to South Carolina, because he invited, I invited myself over to his house. Um, he said, when you come to South Carolina... Give me a call and we'll have lunch. And uh, it says, I spend four months a year at the beach, though. So he's got a beach house. Uh, give me a call when you're uh, arriving and we'll see if we can work it out. 
Sincerely, Bobby Richardson. So, yeah, okay. I invited myself to his house, kind of. I, I said, hey, Bobby, in one of my letters, uh, which I don't have a copy of because I just sent him the original. It's always good. Like some guys come up with these form letters and then just send them off. I like to personalize every letter, let him know that I've taken the time to handwrite everything. And, and so um, I can appreciate something that he handwrites back to me just as much. But anyway, and then he, so he gave me the copy of this book and he personalized it to me, which is fine because I don't ever plan on s selling this book or anything like that. This is my book and has this my co connection to him and sort of a connection to Mantle through him from our, our writings back and forth and from reading his book and stuff like that. But anyway, he says, best wishes, Bobby Richardson, number one. Um, and then he puts his, um, he said, Yankees 55 through 66. He didn't play long as a Yankee. And then he put John uh, 112 there. Uh, religious, religious gentleman. He did the eulogy for uh, Mantle. Um, so um, he, t he told me that I read in here, and he told me the whole story about um, you know Mantle. Um, and I'm not a religious person, you know. Uh, I'm like most people. You believe, yeah, there's a God. Okay, there's a God. We believe that, but. Um, you know, other than that, like, I don't go to church or anything like that. I'm, I'm not a total atheist. I mean, I, I do believe there's there's some God out there. There's, you know, hopefully, I mean, we all need to hold out some kind of hope for, for some kind of some kind of salvation, I guess. Maybe, I don't know, that there's hope for this world. But anyway, um, so Bobby Richardson, guys, you can look up, look him up. Um, and great guy, great TTMer. He normally doesn't charge. Like I said, I haven't done anything since 2019, but I'm I'm thinking about writing him again. This is not a real autograph. This is part of the cover, but great book. Um, I have the other letter that he wrote me. Um, there he is, by the way. Now he's getting up there in age, like a lot of these guys. Um, but what he told me about Mano was, you know, he he was Mano's roommate for a little bit, um, and then he got. Um, roomed with um, Tony Kubek. Tony Kubek and Bobby started rooming together. Um, but uh, when Bobby went out with those guys, he was the guy who was like the designated driver and stuff like that to get the try to get these guys home and in shape. Uh, but he didn't always go out with them because they did have they did have that nightlife and that reputation. So, and he was. Uh, you know, a person of uh, religion, and he didn't uh, partake in that kind of stuff. Anyway, okay, let's get back to this last pack. Tony Gwynn, Hall of Fame. Hey, talking about Dave Staten. There he is. So this is the guy. I got his autograph on his rookie card. And Las Vegas Stars. Remember there that night he hit the ball. He hit it, must have hit it 500 feet. It went all the way out, I think. The scoreboard out in the left field was like 474 feet away and hit hit like literally two-thirds or three-quarters of the way up on the scoreboard and it knocked out some of the lights on the scoreboard. It was funny. It was like almost almost a la, a la the natural when he hit the light tower and uh, the, the lights all blew out and stuff like that. But, you know, kind of brought back that kind of memory. It's like, oh, my God, just like the movie. Almost. Hey, we got a different one. We got the team from Cleveland. Oh, speaking about Las Vegas, that's what shirt I'm wearing. Welcome to beautiful Las Vegas, or whatever it says. Doc Gooden, we've seen his card before. Ah, uh, well, Robbie, I'll spit on you, Alomar, amongst other things. But... That's it. That was those packs. They're done. They're out of the way. They're gone. Um, so that's that. We did get some nice cards. Hall of Famers and fan favorites. They'll go in the uh, their appropriate boxes. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. I've got absolutely. I'm actually all done out of, uh, of stories and and all that stuff. Dirk Remington's in the house. I know that. I love that book. Uh, read that book from cover to cover I had it all memorized I was getting all set for my trip down there to South Carolina took the trip we went down there 
but unfortunately it was during the summer and that's when he was on vacation and i'm like one day i'm with my wife and i'm like man he lives in sumter south carolina i'm driving over to sumter we weren't that far away i'm like i'm driving over to sumter We're, i'm going to his house my wife is no you'll get arrested you'll get arrested for you know being a stalker or something like that i'm like come on he's a regular guy he's not gonna have security at his house and I have this note, I have a note in my hand, that he invited me to his house right here. He said, give him a call, stop by, we'll have lunch. Because I, I, I said this, I told him I had a YouTube channel and it was just starting out. But I would love to sit, spend that afternoon and just talk baseball, talk about Mantle and talk about whatever else he wanted to talk about. And he was down with it. I'm like, this is going to be great. But it didn't turn out as usual. They're going to think, heading up your way late tomorrow. Lock the doors. <laughs> okay. Um, the wife's home, so uh, she's better than a pit bull. So you have to get past the wife. Um, but anyway, I, obviously I didn't go over to his house. Um, but I would have really liked to. It would have been, would have been great. I mean, just you know having that interaction and talking to him and picking his brain and just you know recording this all down and and saving it you know for uh, i'm sure these guys have other things that they, like for him baseball was just a job you know he's he's a really religious guy and that occupies a lot of his time you know so um but um, just to sit and talk to a, a, a guy like that that was around all those great Yankees, you know, all those great Yankees. It's like, man, can you imagine? It's just crazy. He's always lived, he's born and grew up in Sumter, and he still lives in Sumter today. So, then he didn't, he didn't get famous from baseball. He played like 10 or 11 years with the Yankees. He retired at 31, which was still young. But he had to decide, I think, you know, to spend more time with his family because every year they'd go off to spring training and the kids are in school. It's all in the book. And then they would have to take that drive north and like all the Yankees, you know, if they didn't live right there in New York City, only the guys that are making the big bucks were living in New York City. The other guys were living in North Jersey, you know, and then they would commute every day uh, a la um, Trevor Bauer, who commutes in his Porsche to the stadium every day or in Los, L, L, LA now um, after he signed his big contract um, Bobby Richardson got a contract from Topps for um, you know his, his baseball card the contract that he signs um, 250 bucks or a color TV he chose the color TV so his wife and mother-in-law can watch the Yankee games in color. <laughs> so, um, some funny stuff in the book too. Um, and I'm sure if you if you're gonna write him, you're ask him for a copy of his book. I'm sure he'd gladly sell you one or give you one. Like normally it, that book sold for like twenty five bucks, and uh, he sold it to me for ten bucks and paid the shipping, which was, you know, so I got the book almost free because he paid the shipping too basically i was just paying for the shipping but um great guy a great ttmer um didn't make a lot of money back then a lot of these older guys another great ttmer is bobby Schantz. um he signs a lot he's getting up there in age and he is uh an mvp so you know uh, it's a feather in his cap but a great ttmer um and so, yeah, uh, that's going to be it. I'm running out of stories, guys, and we've been doing this for, I appreciate you guys all stopping by, by the way. I've been doing this now for 10 people still watching. Oh, my God, two over two and a half hours. God, time flies when you're having fun doing this stuff. Sammy Thunder, what's up, Sammy? How are you? So, um, uh, lots of players sign and leave bible verse yes yes uh frank tanana does that um there's a lot of guys who do that and that's fine they're they're christians um that's there's i have no problem with that i have no problem the problem i have is 
when you mix politics into a sport. That's all. You know, I think I think I want a TTM Trevor Bauer too. Um, just because he seems like a nice guy, um, and I subscribe to him, I watch his videos and stuff like that. I just think it's cool the way he he walks you through a lot of the stuff. You get to look a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, stuff that we never think about, all the conditioning that they have to do, what they go through. We think we think they just show up and play a game, right? We think it's just a game, but today's athletes they have to put in a lot more than just show up and play a game. You know, you don't go to spring training and then that's it. These guys constantly have to be working on their game to stay on the top of their game or they'll lose their job and they'll be back in the minors. So, um, yeah, it's a lot different today than, than what it was back in the day, back in the early, the uh, dead ball era and stuff like that. The Rangers lit up Trevor. Well, I mean, you know, to Trevor, you know, so the rumor is, is he putting stuff on the ball like a lot of these other guys? So did he stop using his, you know, his stick em, whatever, uh, and it cost him his spin rate? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but you can't be perfect every time out either. You know, the offense has to win some of them. So, but I still think he's a really nice guy. If you guys haven't seen out, checked out Trevor Bauer, check him out. Um, if you're a subscriber, you get a little more extra content than, than, um, just when he puts out regular stuff to his YouTube channel. Um, other than that, let's see, um, so yeah, I think I'm going to get back into TTMing and do some of that. Not a lot, like I, I was doing a lot, like, um, to me a lot would be like three a week or something like that, but I have done some. I uh, haven't done any in a couple years, like since 2009, nothing last year. 2020 was nothing for me. So it was um, probably the last thing I did was that book. I'm not sure if Andretti cards, and I was doing the Kyle and Richard Petties, the Andrettis, and Bobby Richardson all around the same time. I was always doing Bobby Shant, Shantz, um because he's a kind of local guy. You could send to him and get it back real quick. Um, but those are guys, you know, that are pretty much guaranteed to get you get your stuff returned. And Bobby d doesn't charge either one. Um, but I always sent money, five bucks, something in the envelope, because those guys didn't make the money, the millions of dollars. The big contracts was like a Mickey Mantle, you know, a hundred million or a hundred thousand dollars. Babe Ruth, you know, was like the first big guy, a hundred thousand dollar contract, and then. You know, uh, Mantle had a big contract. Mays had a big contract. Um, I don't even know what Hank Aaron's largest contract was. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it took a long time for the guys to start making a lot of money, millions of dollars. Now they're making, you know, almost a half a billion dollars, but they got to sign 13 year contracts too. Basically, they're lifetime contracts. I went a little nuts and won an auction on 69 Nolan Ryan. Very nice. Congratulations. Was it graded or anything? I have two. I have two Ryan rookie cards. I can only find the one. But uh, I have two of them. They're in the case over here. Well, it's in the case. One of them. By the way, everything in this room, no, not the racks, but the vending machine, this display case, everything is mobile. I got wheels on, not these racks, obviously, but um, so I can move them around and get access to them because I just kind of push them up against the wall. So here's my Ryan. I don't have a lot of old stuff, but I don't have a ton of slabs either. I only have a couple slabs. Let's see, where am I going to in this stack. 
thinking that vending machine is going to have to go. I bought that vending machine for, I paid a hundred bucks for it, but I think it's going to have to go. So a lot of you guys have seen these autographs, but we have new people here. So here's my Harmon Killebrew, which is rookie card, but I got it signed because um, when I got it, it was already trimmed down. Someone like really trimmed it up, cut it up bad. So I said, you know, what a, what better than to increase the value of this card is to have him sign it. So that was an in-person autograph. This was an in-person autograph. Greg Maddox. Um, Paul Molitor. I believe that was a TTM. I don't remember ever meeting him. Joe Morgan was a TTM. Let's see, it's in ink. That was a long time ago. Lou Brock, that was a long time ago. Um, got that TTM t to the team. Back then, you could you sent to the team, and the guys would sign your stuff. Um, Dave Winfield was a TTM as well. So these I sent out and got them graded uh, a while back. Don Drysdale. I had two Drysdale. I'm looking at it like, really? What? What? This looks like Alan something something, right? A L A N. But, and I had another one that looked like Don Drysdale, and I sent two of them in, and the one came back bogus, and this one came back as legit. So, go figure. Uh, Johnny Bench, that was a TTM, came back legit. Oh, here's my, one of my two Ryan um, rookie cards. The other one's in a box upstairs somewhere. Catfish Hunter. So I TTM'd him as a kid. I got one, and I sent it in the PSA, and it came back not legit. So I bought this one off of eBay. This was an uh, eBay purchase. Frank Robinson. I think it was eBay purchase, or it came in a lot that I bought. I can't quite remember that one. I don't know how old this uh, PSA, you know, banner thing is there. This was um, Stan Musial. This was an eBay purchase, but it came with the JSA certificate. So I've dealt with JSA before, and I know they do it right there at the at the signings usually. So I wasn't worried about buying that off eBay. This was an eBay purchase, Tom Seaver. And it's got a little authentication on the back from Signature, the company that, that produced the cards. Frank Thomas, same thing. Got the little thing on the back, authentic from Signature cards or something like that. Number to 4,000. Um, Orlando Cepeda, that was an eBay purchase. But it's certified through the manufacturer. So it was 15 bucks. Either bought it at eBay or at a card show. I can't remember. Might have been at the card show. Uh, Ferguson Jenkins, that was a card show purchase? Yep. So when I look at this and I look at this, I'm thinking I got these at the card show, but different vendors because this is a different sticker. And this one was 12 bucks. It's numbered 47 to 450. Nice Ferguson Jenkins autograph. Uh, this was an eBay purchase, 20 bucks. It's a. Yeah, multicolored patch. It's number three of 25. 20 bucks for Biggio. Years ago, I bought that. Well worth it. Um, this was an eBay purchase. But because I had TTM'd him, I wanted to make sure that I had a good copy that what I was getting was legit. So I bought this one here and they matched up. eBay purchase right after Willie died. I was lucky to grab this up at a decent price. So, um, I've got TTMs of Goose Gossage, but I wanted one that said Rich. So he, this is Rich Gossage, not Goose. I wanted one that said Rich, so I got it. Um, this is a Beckett. This is an eBay purchase of Duke Snyder. Pretty cool. Ended up. Pulling some out of uh, Dunruss Lumber Company too. 
eBay purchase of Sparky Lyle. For now, card show purchase. You can see how that's got the red stripes on it. So that went with that other card. Uh, this came in a, a box lot that I had, um, I had um, bought, I think. I don't think this was my TTM. It might have been. I'm not sure. But anyway, this was an eBay purchase. It's numbered, so I just figured it's legit. It's got the whole thing on the back from Classic saying it's certified through them. Um, Preacher Row, I bought this off of CVC, I believe it was. Um, he had an auction going on, and I've got this like for a couple bucks. Preacher Row. This was an eBay purchase, but I had TTM Don Larson before he passed away. Actually, a couple years before he passed away, and then I wanted to do a comparison, so I bought this one, and. Um, if uh, let's see who was it yeah it was hold on he's probably not here anymore Chris Bolton he's probably not here but he would he would appreciate this one here this was an eBay purchase Jose Canseco I still have them in their bags, so I didn't want to scratch up the case, so I left them in their bags. But it's numbered to 25, number one of 25. So that's the first one of the run. This was an in person at the, um, well, prior to this one last weekend, the one of the last ones that they had before you know the pandemic hit, um, and I got it certified through J JSA, who was there. It was like. 29 bucks, I think, for Jose Canseco. Um, this was the one, I think, prior to Canseco, a couple months prior, was Pete Rose was there signing. So I took him to 72, got it certified through JSA, and Pete Rose. Nice guy, by the way. Bobby Mercer. Uh, actually, was a very good ball player. Um, and great announcer for the Yankees and he gave the um, eulogy uh, for um, Thurman Munson Bobby Mercer <clears throat> and he was a, a huge um, supporter of uh, cancer research and stuff like that like he and his wife would always go around throughout Major League Baseball and talk to the players and you know have them sign up to donate to their charity and uh, sadly enough uh, what he was fighting to find a cure for cancer ended up taking his life too and I don't know where my mantle and Maris are but you know what I think they're in the trap box where's the trap box yeah they're in the trap box but I don't know what to do with the my trap box hello my trap Anyway, so I don't have a whole bunch of slabs, um, and this is what I got for my slab slash certified autographs. Not a lot. I'm not into all that. What was Lisa? Did, oh, no, I heard Conseco. A lot of guys, Ed Too Tall Jones, tried boxing, you know, a lot of guys tried to cross over. Um,. I heard, yeah, Canseco got beat up pretty good, but you know what? He's not a trained, he's not trained for that stuff, so. He trained to, you know, hit a baseball. Steroids, you know, he didn't, he didn't train his muscles to do that kind of exercise, that kind of workout. So, can't blame him for getting beat up. I don't remember my child box now. That was a chipper was up here. Obviously, I moved it. All right, guys. One last thing. I don't make a habit of plugging this, but I will because I know how hard it is to to get um, to get packs um, wax. So I put together, and this is not a complete one because I ended up actually pulling 
pulling packs out of this to open up here for you guys. But I put together these kits. I've sold two already um, to um, people on the channel. Um, and other people expressed interest in the product. But So what I'm doing is I'm putting these little... I can't call them boom boxes because someone else has that name already. But they're just... Um, you know, they're just um, packs of cards. You're guaranteed 200 cards, at least 200 cards. So however many packs that takes to get, get you to 200. You know, you just total up. So this is just a a variety of, you know, what you could get in them. Um, could be rack packs. So rack packs have 40 some cards in usually. And the total will be 200 plus cards. And then I throw in one of those autographs that you saw in my TTM box. Just throwing a random autograph in there. Um, and the price point on that um, is going to be... Um, so you're not first of all, you're not guaranteed like a, a rookie autograph, like a modern rookie, because there's not really... The, the most modern pack is like 1999, right? And I forget what the beginning year was, um, but you know, 90, they only go up to 99. So they're in, it's from the 80s to 99. All right. Um, and it's gonna be it's gonna be with I pay the shipping because I'm gonna I'm gonna send it out in. They kind of just fit into these these bulk mailers, and the bulk mailers are like 8.45. So um, the price on that is going to be thirty dollars. Let me write it on here. I'm going to get two hundred plus cards, and the cost is thirty bucks. But I pay the shipping. Which for this is eight dollars and forty-five cents. So out of your thirty bucks, I have to put eight dollars and forty-five cents of that towards the shipping because that's what it costs right now to send this bulk shipping. Again, you're gonna get two hundred plus cards. Oh, and you get one. One random autograph. All right, so thirty bucks if anyone's interested in it. My email um, is right here. Boom. Oh, that's my email. If anyone's interested in that, just email me with your information. And I use PayPal right now. I only have PayPal only. Um, let's see what Sammy's saying. Do you have any advice for collecting vintage cards from the 60s and 70s? Just um, buy what you like. Um, and, you know, don't worry about what anyone else says. In other words, um, sometimes you're going to get a card that's got rounded fuzzy corners you know from the 70s and if it's early 70s you kind of can be okay with that and 60s definitely in 50s and 40s that's all part of the process right you're not going to get you shouldn't get a very good card they're just not found in the wild but um do your homework like check prices check what cards if you're going to buy like a a, a, a set what cards, who comes in that set? What are the big rookie cards? What are the big names? Um, and um, just don't worry about what other people say. If you're comfortable with paying the money, if you have the money to spend, to burn, um, do it that way. Just buy what you like and like what you buy. And, but for me, I almost did it this weekend. I was going to go to the card show and I was just going to sit down at dollar boxes and I was just going to pick out, cherry pick what catches my eye because that's what I do I I'm a on-site whatever catches my eye on site because I buy things that are not even baseball cards all right 
I buy this. I'm not even a, I'm not even a Cleveland Indians fan. I kind of like the, the the movie was pretty good. Uh, this was personalized to some guy named Mark. All right, but because it's something from the guy's not even a baseball player. He's an actor, right? But I just thought it was so cool because other people can relate to this. You know what I'm saying? So it says, Mark, strike this mofo out. Roger Dorn. He, Roger Dorn. His uniform number, right? But then he signed. I forget what his real name is, but he signed it there. Uh, it had no certificate of authenticity, right? Nothing like that. But who would take the time to even take the time to forge this, you know? Like, really? There's other forgeries you could do. But I just saw this, and I thought it was pretty cool. And it was 10 bucks. And I'm like, man, that would look great hanging on a wall. Problem is I don't have a wall here to hang it on where people can see it. You know, a lot of people have stuff in their background. Right? Hanging lights, whatever, things. Um, I don't have that luxury here. You know what I mean? So I got it. I like it. I love it, actually. But I may end up parting with it someday to someone who, who might be an Indians fan who really appreciates it. You know what I mean? I love it and I bought it because it caught my eye and it just, it rang, it rang, it hit, struck a chord with me. And that's kind of the way I am with my cards. Yeah. He's back. The wild thing. Nice haircut, Rick. Um... Yes, and then again, I've turned down cards in the wild that, you know, you don't want water damage cards or stuff like that. Try to avoid them, obviously. But you're going to get some wear. They're in the wild. Back back in the day, like a lot of my cards, our, our corners are worn, the, the 71s, the, the really beat up. Um, but we didn't have all this neat, neat stuff to protect our cards. We didn't have top loaders, penny sleeves. Literally, what you saw is a shoebox is what we had. We had shoeboxes. I had, and I know some people still have them, and I still have a couple, cheese boxes. Oh, God, I wish I had one. I, I have one upstairs, I think. So, when the, when, like at the deli, when you get, my father-in-law owned a deli um, when I was dating my, my wife. Um, and he would save me all the cheese boxes when the block of cheese would come, you know. Uh, he would take it out because it still had the plastic wrap on it. And he would give me all the cheese boxes. And I would just load up. It was like 600 cards you could probably fit into one. or, You know, you jam them in there. Um, shoe boxes. Uh, then with the cheese boxes. And I had, God, hundreds of cheese boxes. Like, my collection wasn't this big. This, I got this big over the last two and a half mountain maybe three years um up until that point like three years ago i had like six hundred thousand cards in my my whole pc my whole personal collection but over the last three years i've been buying people's collections and stuff like that and i've amassed now almost three million um but i've and, I, and i'm like man i'm never going to sell a card but i've realized i have too much like, I don't need 900 of this guy. I don't need 100 of this guy. I don't need 50 of this guy. So then I start, like, I'll have some auctions and I'll, I'll, I'll filter them out that way there. I've given cards away to people too already. I've given packs away to people. You know, whatever. Um, but the Velveeta cheese or government cheese. <laughs> no, it's actually, like, Land of Lakes or, or whatever. Like, it was, it was good cheese. Um... But I know we're talking about government cheese too. Yeah, government cheese and powdered milk and all that other crap. And you young people won't understand that stuff. How about that carnation milk? The carnation milk where you had to add, like it was so thick you had to add water to it to make it kind of like regular milk. Yeah. So, young people have no idea, you know, they got it pretty easy right now. Well, maybe not the last year, but... They still have it easier than, yeah. I also collect NBA cards and just finished the 
81, 82 top set. Nice, nice. Um, <clears throat> so I have, um, when I was younger, I collected all four sports. But then you could afford it. They only came out with one set. Like, one set. Okay, but it was seven series. Like, 72 tops had actually 132 cards times seven. So, like, every every so many weeks it would come out with series one box and then a series two box and a series three and it went through seven series but as it got towards the end you know they may have three boxes of one two three four and five and then six only had two and seven they only had one box you know they really short printed them back in the day um so yeah um now you got collector's choice you got upper deck i mean sps you had all these and you know, even back then in the 90s, you had all these different versions of Upper Deck, you know, and now you got all these different versions of Tops and um, Bowman and, and Dunruss and, and Optic. And before there was one Fleer, there was one Dunruss, there was one Tops, you know. Score wasn't even a thing yet. I remember like in 81, 80 or 81, I think it was 81 when... Um, the, the, the Fleer and the Dunruss came out. And I was so excited going to the store. And I bought my first box. I bought the whole box right up. It was like 13 bucks for the whole box. Or 12 bucks or whatever it was. And um, it was the Dunruss. And I opened it up. And I got halfway through the box. And the cards were all the same. They were like all the same cards. I'm like what? What is going on? So I sent the rest of the box back to the company. And they replaced it with another box. But you know. Um, still a little messed up. Uh, let's see what else. My grandfather have me his oh, left you his wooden cigar boxes to store cards. There you go. Yeah, I mean that's good too because it helps protect them. Jersey, Jersey, how's it going? Boom is a man definitely in the hobby for the right reasons. And need more good folks. Thanks, Jersey. I didn't see Ronnie come in yet tonight, too, either. Um, I am 51, but... Damn, that government cheese was the best. Hated powdered milk. Um, Barty could get the powdered eggs down. They, oh, barely could get... Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Bob Euchre. I have a Euchre card. Was awesome in that movie, Larry. Yeah, I watched it over... Yeah, it's on every once in a while. You can watch it. Same way with The Natural. I love The Natural. It's such a great... So many great baseball movies out there. You know, it's... Oh, it's better than watching baseball today. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand some of you guys still want to go to the games and watch the games. And that's your choice. I, I don't fault you or condemn you or anything like that. I understand it's been a rough year last year for a lot of people. And you got that itch. But for me, uh, I... I, it left a bad taste in my mouth, you know. Just like if you live through the strike, you know, the baseball strike, it left a bad taste in your mouth and you just turned you off for a long time before you got back into it. Hey, high risk, 1967, how's it going? Bob Euchre still does TTM, yes. It's a good one to get too. Um, I would, if you're really interested in them, I would chance it send it to him for sure. <clears throat> Thanks, Alex. So, guys, check out Jay's Mix. Alex, throw up your link there so we can get you some subs because Alex, it's so many of you guys, and I, and I and I I know you're. F I gotta sit down. I've been standing this whole time, guys. Um, but so many of you guys are like stuck, like ugh, like under a hundred, under five hundred, and and then you're like under seven fifty and. I, I know your pain because I've been there. I've been, I've been doing this for three years, guys. And it took literally up until last month to get over that, that finally over that 1,000. To get the first 100 took a while, right? And then all of a sudden, it's 400. You hit 500, right? At 250, I had my first like giveaway. It wasn't a giveaway. It was a personal rip. I opened up a pack of, of 1972 Topps football, Series 1, it turned out to be. Um, that I've been holding on. I held on to them for 20 years. Um, and um, 
then I hit 500 and then it just got really slow and then I hit 750 and then I fell back way back not just like back like 50 60 down again you know and I had already had my 750 giveaway that's why I'm like no I'm holding off on this thousand I want to stay at a thousand for at least a month so we made it uh, towards the end of the last month we're hanging on we're gonna we're barely hanging on by the skin of our teeth to add a thousand and for the life of me and I know you guys feel the same kind of have the same wondering like there's so many people in this hobby how can it be that we all can't be growing like we're all stagnant we're all stuck and and we're not showing any progress on our channels and it gets frustrating I understand let me read the chat I'm okay, Meg. Uh, yeah, not wanting to get big, just love that. Eh, but a thousand's not big, and you might as well get a couple bucks for your ad revenue. Right now, like my ad revenue, I could go in and check it. I was like, ooh, you're like, you're gonna get twelve dollars this month, ooh. And I don't even know if that takes into like if that. It's supposed to be just ad revenue and not super chats. I don't know, but I got a couple super chats. And by the way, you guys don't have to super chat. That's not what it's about. But a couple guys gave super chats which was great but i don't know if that's factored into your ad revenue like it shouldn't but all of a sudden it's like oh you're gonna make 12 dollars this month or this year i don't know how they figure it out but it's just it it's another way to help support your channel without taking money out of other people's pocket because i know um times are hard for a lot of people too like a lot of people think things are rosy and stuff and if I'm if I'm feeling the the pinch and I have a pretty darn good job if I'm feeling the pinch as far as buying cards goes you know if I'm second guessing do I really need that or do I want it that's do I need it or do I just want it and you have to then do the little calculation in your head do I really like that card chart I really want it to go but I realized I didn't need to go. I can do just as good at the flea market if, if I wanted to do. And I didn't even do the flea market because there's other things I need to do. I want to I want to um, start making merchandise for the channel, and that's a way to support the channel is to sell merchandise. So this is merchandise, but I I don't push it a lot. I don't push it a lot. But after the first couple I I sent out, I'm like, wow, like. Um, I just dropped eight dollars and forty-five cents of that to ship it, so I didn't make as much as I thought I was going to make. Because remember, I had to buy all these. I literally, guys, uh, dropped four thousand dollars on unopened packs of cards. Not the stuff you see back here. Those that four thousand dollars I spent like two years ago. Thank God it was before the thing hit. Well, I should say the cases are from that four thousand dollars too. Uh, have all they're all upstairs? Like, and I got like two hundred of these things set up with two hundred plus cards per. Um, that I dropped that all into, and that was going to be like an investment to make money for the channel to help support the channel. But I never really got it off the ground. I, but I, you know, I'm, I guess I'm a lousy salesperson. I don't know. Um, I don't push it. I'm not pushy, but it's there if you guys, you know, want to want to buy it. That's great. Well, I can send it to you, and um, you'll have something for your channel. Because I know, like right now, buying wax is as expensive as all. I'll get out. Um, I don't remember what blaster boxes used to be. I thought they were like ten bucks, right? And I took it out front. But anyway. Didn't, didn't these used to be like 10 bucks? Like, weren't these 10 bucks? Now they're 20, uh, 20 bucks and up. Sometimes 25, 30 bucks. Didn't they used to be 10 bucks at the store? I don't know. I don't remember. It's been so long. Oh, I don't know how many months ago it was that I bought this. Six months ago now? It was um, 140 bucks. 120 bucks. At Target. 
120 bucks. I'm like, wait, what? This should have been like 40, 40 bucks, right? 50 bucks. I don't know. So I'm I'm kind of lucky that um, I bumped into Ronnie over a year ago, and he has those, and I was able to buy some 2021 20, Heritage off of him for um, 20 bucks a box. And I saw other people at the same flea market, 25 bucks and up. So let's see, Jay's mix, Lisa. There you go. Thanks, Jay, for throwing up Lisa's there. Guys, don't forget to hit up Lisa. Guys, throw your YouTube links up here. You have a wrench. That's why I give it to you. Throw your YouTube links up here. Let's try to help you grow your channels because I know how hard it is. I, For the life of me, I can't understand why um, people don't catch on. Like, it costs you zero, nothing, goose eggs, to subscribe to someone's channel. That's it. It costs you nothing, right? And I'm talking about those guys who are not subscribed to your channels that are subscribed to my channel. That I've got a thousand subscribers, right? So, and I know I don't get a thousand in here at one time, but hopefully they're getting this message. Just, guys, go down my go down my um, my list when you check out who I'm subscribed to. Click on the channels tab, and it'll bring up everyone that I'm I'm subscribed to, like 2,500 people, right? Um, and just go through and it'll tell you if you're subscribed to them or not. You just click on it. Watch a video. And I found out you can't watch the video and have it muted because they don't get credit for it. I didn't know that. Because I would be streaming like seven. I'd have seven, you know, tabs. I'd have seven browser windows opened up and I'd be listening to one. And usually it's a live one or something like that. While the other ones are playing, you know, in the background. But... I found out through Donald that you can't, they don't get credit for that. So I, I learned now I just got to turn them down as low as low you can get. Listen to one and let the other ones play through. Get them their view hours that they need. So um, someone said you didn't need the 4,000 view hours, that they heard the policy change. I checked the policy. You still need 4,000 view hours per the last, prior 12 months. So by doing these lives like this, by going live, and it takes a while to get used to talking, but you're not really publicly speaking. There's absolutely no one in the room here with me. So you'll still reach a, a level of comfort, all right? And you'll be able to talk to people and um, get your message across. Talk about anything. I mean, we talked about a bunch of different things in here, right? I can tell you stories, you know, life experiences that, that I've gone through, and I've shared some of them with you. Um, and we can talk baseball cards. I'm terrible at keeping up with the chat. I really need someone in here to, to like, you know, someone just ask this question here, you know. Prices are insane. I haven't bought modern. Yeah, I haven't bought, like this I got lucky because I know Ronnie and Ronnie's been bugging me to come up and buy this stuff. Um, but even Ronnie's having a hard time getting like other stuff. It's like the only thing available is like football now, he says. So... You know, and I don't do football. So you got to be frugal with your with your money. Penny pinching. I always look at bang for my buck. And it's an old cliche. Just subscribe, Lisa. Thanks, Larry. I appreciate that. Lisa will hit you back. Don't worry, she'll get you back. She's good for that. <clears throat> so, Larry, throw up your link to your channel, please, so that you can just help her shortcut it. Bam, go right to you. Um, and we're going to help each other grow. Uh, now, uh, like, I kind of got this. This is not my original idea. Because uh, uh, James Gip Gip. <clears throat> Guy's going for 30,000 subscribers, right? I went out to his channel once. I'm subscribed to him. I went out more than once. But, I mean, the first time I went out to his channel, I was curious to see what he was doing. And um, I'm like, all right, let's check him out. And all he does is sit here like I am sitting here right now. He's got nothing else. He doesn't do cards. He did buy some cards off me in the auction, but he never gave me his address. So I got to get his address so I can um, send him his cards. I don't want him to think I stiffed him. He has been back in the channel once 
um, since then. But all he does is sit down live. And the dude, when I first bumped into him, I think he had a, a thousand or two thousand. Like not, he was small potatoes, but not small like me with just, you know, a few. And what he does was um, he promotes other people's channels. But what he does, and he kind of forces you to do this, is he wants you to go subscribe to someone else that he'll put their, he puts their link up in the chat. He said, you want me to help you? You go to this person here. And you, everyone that's in here in chat now, click on that link, go there, subscribe to that channel, right? Watch a video, thumbs up, all that good stuff. And when you come back, you throw up the link to their page. So I know you went there, right? And then I will give you a wrench to go ahead and post your link or whatever. And so I just wanted to cut out all that other stuff. Now the dude's going for 30,000 subscribers. And that's all he does. He's got almost, he's got 29 plus. I don't think he, he just went live uh, over the weekend. He went up to his cabin um, with his family and stuff. Um, but that's all he does is he helps other small YouTubers grow. In return, they subscribe to him and they help him grow. So now he's like th going for 30,000 subscribers and has zero content. He just helps, and he puts that right there in his title, helping small YouTubers grow. So I kind of got that, like, from him. I'm like, well, just like watching uh, Eric Jabs at first. Um, it's like, well, he's doing that. Wait, I can do that? So I started my own channel. And then from Eric, I learned about John, which John and I have way more in common than Eric and I do, um, even though we're, like, 20 years apart in age or more, um, that... Um, I can do what they do. So I started my own channel. And I started out doing gaming stuff, video games and stuff like that. And I had some subscribers. Um, but then I switched over. Once I discovered the baseball card channels, I'm like, okay, I can do that. And so I made mainly my channels about baseball cards. And um, also now, since I found this guy, uh, James Gip Gip. I can't, I'm probably saying it wrong, but it looks like Gip Gip. Um... And watch what he does. I'm like, I can do that too. I can help people grow their channels. So just like, but he doesn't give out the wrenches. He doesn't just like, almost everyone that comes in here, once you've been here a couple of times, you're going to get a wrench and you're going to be welcome to throw up your links to your channels. <clears throat> and anyone in here can get, remember back in the day, you could just click on their name and, or click on the dots off to the side and go to their channel. Boom, subscribe. The worst thing YouTube did was to get rid of the... Well, they did it for a reason, obviously. Um, but to make sure that you're not a bot or whatever and you're actually going to have to do some work, I guess. Yeah, the only way to put a link to your channel with jabs... Yeah, and I've done that. I've done that with Eric. And it's helped a little bit. And I, I still contribute to John's and John helped a little bit in the beginning. But last month, John made that final push for me when I was like under 50 away to getting there. I was more like 30 something away. And he put up, and, I, and I'm surprised it didn't show up in the mail here um, with his last lot, that uh, Jacob DeGrom rookie card, Bowman rookie card. He said that he needed people to go over to get me over a thousand, and we got to a thousand and six. That he would do a giveaway on that card, or I would do the giveaway on my channel. But I thought he would send the card with this next package, and it didn't happen. So I don't know where that is, what's going on with that. But he will give it away, whether it's on his channel. Uh, it might be better for him to give it on his channel because he's got way more people, but his people aren't my people either. Only a small group of his people are my people. Well, no, but a lot of us go there, too. A lot of the people that are here go over there and watch him because they enjoy his content as well. I really... And again, so... So, like, the flea market, the whole flea market thing, that's because I watched John and Eric do it. And I'm like, you know what? I can do that. And so I, I do it. I do it. I don't do it in the wintertime. 
but I do it, you know, when the weather gets warm and it's nice out, I'll go. My wife and I used to go anyway, so uh, now I just, my wife, who's disabled and she has a little bit more mobility issues, so I just go on my own. And, you know, uh, I try to have people, like I had Jeff Airtime come over here at the house and hang out and do the, the grand opening of the studio with me. He has offered to go with me to, because he only lives up the road, he lives like you know, five or six miles away, um, to go to the flea market with me. He's got mobility with his back and all that stuff, so um, he can't do the big flea market, but he can do the smaller flea market. And we can just go around and, and you know, y'all, a lot of you guys know Jeff Airtime. He's taking a break from YouTube to do family things. I understand he's got whatever is going on over there. Remember, family comes first, and that's the most important thing. Is These are only cards. They're inanimate objects. They, they don't really mean anything. You have living, breathing people around you that should take precedence over any cards. No matter, I don't care what the value of that card is. If it costs you your, your family or whatever, then it's really not worth it. Okay. I think a lot of us saw that with um, with Eric Jabs, what happened with him a couple years back. Now, he's rebounded, but he's not whole. He's not a whole person. He lost his family because of the cards and the biz. So you got to balance. <clears throat> I'm going to the Stormville garage sale this Sunday. So the whole towns have like a town-wide garage sale. We just had one. Um, most of the, there wasn't a whole bunch, but there was five or six in my, my area, and I found one lady who was, had some cards in her trunk, and I bought one box of cards that, eh, it was for a good cause, you know. Um, I did a little bit of recording of it, I think. Um, then let's see what else. Um, flea markets are, like, I got flea markets for guys that sell at the flea markets every weekend. Um, I'm lucky that I'm living in a portion of the country that, there's a lot of people here and a lot of people have cards that they're selling right now because the market's high for them. The price is good for them. Um, so, like those four boxes I bought the other day for 80 bucks would have cost me like 20 bucks uh, two years ago. It's in the Hudson Valley at an airstrip. Oh, nice. Nice. See, they should have done that with our town-wide thing is they should have put it just in one little field somewhere and say, here it is. Let's do it. <clears throat> Secondary progressive multi MS, but I will hop on, hop my ass into a wheelchair and push myself to all the garage sales. There you go. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, you know, um, It's it's fun to do. It gets you out of the house. It gets you a little bit of exercise and um, fresh air. And, um, and we're coming out of this pandemic stuff, so we're, it's going to be not too long. We're not going to have to wear masks anymore. You know, a lot of places are already coming out. Like, if you're fully vaxxed, you don't need to wear a mask. Um, so, yeah. Flea market, it was like 50 50 mix of people wearing masks and people weren't. So, you know, uh, slowly. And that's New Jersey. New Jersey's, you know, pretty strict. Um, um, but even their, I think the mandate was like, well, 70% of the, the country or the state, then we can start getting our masks off. So we'll see if they stick to that, that mandate that they said. That's true. Jab's family and the past is alive. Both got me started. There you go. Donald Blump Dolls back on my YouTube channel in the late spring of 2019. It took me nine months to get 1,000. Grinding away for sure. It is fun to meet people. It is. It is. It is. I remember watching Donald do uh, his live yard sale. He says he's going to do another one this year. Right, Donald? Live yard sale from his garage, from inside of his garage. So we look forward to that one. Donald's always going live, by the way, guys. Check him out if you haven't already. Make sure you hit him up. Donald, throw up your link. 
Um, Sammy Thunder. So, um, I've been lucky that I haven't had a like a, I haven't had a lot of problems with people. That's why I'm f pretty free with giving out the wrenches. I've been lucky that everyone comes in here; they're respectful and they're not goofing around and timing people out and stuff like that or whatever. I had one of my last lives. I had a couple things go on and. There was one before that that was some really bad stuff happened, but um, other than that, yeah, it's been I've been lucky, you know, to the point where I haven't had any problems with the people that come in here. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> and also help with depression and get out and go to the garage. So yeah, exactly. Um, I I so. For me, I, I work for a company that has government contracts. Literally, the company only shut down for two weeks during the whole pandemic. It's only shut down for two weeks, and then we were back running full blast, not stopping. Um, so it is what it is, you know. I've been lucky that way. Oh, you're welcome, Sammy. Just, you know, feel free to throw up your link, Sam, so we can get you some subscribers and help you grow your channel. Even if you don't have content right now, you may want to start one day. You may be inspired from someone like Donald or, or Alex over at Jay's Mix or even Lisa. Lisa does uh, cards and stuff, too. So, um, Dirk. I mean, you have a lot, of, a lot of really nice people that come in here and hang out and, you know... Um, I do do, I do, I do do, I said do do. Is it going to cost me my monetization, Donald, do you think, if I said do do? Hmm, hmm, I don't know. Anyway, um, I do, from time to time, use StreamYards. And I really like it, because I like to interact with other people. But there are drawbacks to that, too. Hey. hey. Yes. Hey, I'm making a special, you want one? Yeah, sure. Thanks, babe. Room service just came in. She's going to make me a pretzel. So, um, yeah. So, StreamYards is great. I love it. But you can only have a couple people. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What did Andy say? Hold on. I didn't want to walk off aircraft with the defects found on half the tail. He... Wait. He persevered knowing. He persevered knowing the bird is behind schedule, and after all, he is a mechanic like us. He was pissed off, so therefore, y'all won't see me tomorrow. Got sheets to do, which he did to send a message. She's why y'all know it's getting old. <sighs> All right. Thanks, Andy. Sorry, guys. I got a text message from work. All right. Um. So. That was Andy, a co-worker of mine. I'm getting a text now. I hope he's still not at work. Can't be at work. But anyway, he might still be at work, which is ter which is terrible because we started at 6 a.m. and it's now 10.30 p.m. But, um, so for you guys who don't know, I work for Boeing, uh, Philadelphia, and we build helicopters for the um, government, Chinooks. And we have a we're building right now for foreign governments, and that's we have two production lines. One is for the U.S. Army, the other is for foreign foreign militaries. And I've been working on a foreign military line almost the entire time I've been there, the 13 years. 
and so Andy just uh, um, Andy, one of my co-workers, says he's uh, taking tomorrow off because it's uh, been a rough day. Day off. Okay, he's gonna he's he's gonna be moving soil. So, all right, he's got yard work. Like, okay. Be careful. There we go. I can't get through. Oh well, yeah, I got my wall up. Yeah. <laughs> I just gave because I gave it to the uh, the room. So that's what I do. I build helicopters for the U.S. government and foreign governments, and we're working for Singapore right now. We're building helicopters for Singapore, and the customer is there all the time. And apparently, he was upset with something today. The customer who works for the Singapore military, and um, I got a career ahead. Being a stonemason, cause Boeing can't build and it isn't worth buying anymore. I'm not going to comment to that. I'm going to comment. The guy's upset. He's upset. All right, so he needs a day off. And they work, they, they pressure us a lot to get stuff done, that's all. But anyway, are you an engineer? I'm not an engineer, I'm a mechanic. I just build them. I get the paperwork, it tells it's like building a giant model. Just think of a model as twice the size of this garage. It's sixty feet long, it's you know, twenty feet wide. And you open up your box when you get it home and pull out the instructions and you read the instructions. Step one you do this, step two you do this, and so on and so on. Just if you ever built a model, that's what it's like, only it's on a grander scale. And um well, he's really upset. Because he won't stop texting. Um, and that's what I do. If we have a problem, we go to engineers and we have engineers fix it. But this customer is very, very picky. And they won't. Excuse me while I'm eating. And they want everything the way they want it. I mean, if you, and you got to understand it. These are brand new helicopters. How would you feel if you go into a dealership and you want to buy a car, but you only got three wheels on it? Now, that's an extreme case. But you got four wheels and no spare. Remember how you felt when you first bought your first car and you had that full size spare? And the next time you went and bought a car and they give you these little donuts, you're like, what is this? And that's kind of what it's like. You're going from that full size spare to a donut and the customer doesn't like the donuts. He's going off. I'm not even gonna show that on camera. He's going off. So um customer's always right, right? That's what we say. That's the motto. And the customer knows it. They're paying millions of dollars for these helicopters and they want them the way they want them. So something's not right they point it out and we have to go and fix it I have to go fix it or engineer we take it to engineering and say hey we got a problem here that's what the customer wants and how are we going to give it to them that's kind of stuff <sighs> during the war during the war during war time um, you could pump out an airplane a day right no matter the size of the airplane once you started the initial production line rolling it gets to a point where every day during the Second World War, they're pumping out one, at least one airplane a day. Boom, 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 right? Nowadays, to produce that same airplane takes months, literally a month to pump it out. Um, so a lot more stuff stuffed inside the same package, you know what I mean? But the customer wants it the way they want it, so that's the way it is. All right, let's read the chat. 
dirt. Hope you get some food in you uh, so you can chat. <laughs> Peace of great minds. Bye, Sammy. Okay, Sammy's leaving. Well, friends, I must be on my way. Thanks again for the advice on vintage collecting. Boom sign. Good night, everyone. All right, Sam, we'll see you later if you're still here. Thanks for coming in and hanging out, guys. Um, yeah, I wanted to sign off like um, an hour ago. Soft pretzels. Yeah, that's my one of my weaknesses. With mustard. You know that. That's a, that's a thing, guys. I don't know. Now, I don't get in a fancy golden or spicy mustard. That's just regular straight up hot dog mustard right there. Hey, my, my kids don't like mustard. I can't understand that for the life of me. My two sons, they look at me and like, oh, God. I used to look at pizza like people at first when when I started coming in and working in Philly and people would put mustard on their pretzel. I'm like, what? But now I can't have a pretzel without mustard. i got to knock off some of that salt, though. There's just way too much salt on there. Now I make them at home. Excuse me for eating in front of y'all. All I had was some um, leftover pizza for dinner. C31 transport a day. Whatever they were making back then, they were pumping them out. Um, B25 bombers. Um, um, B17s. B29s. Right? We're talking one a day. They're pumping them out, right? Now it takes literally a month to make a helicopter. The planning stage is like two years in the planning alone. They sit down and they go over every little detail with the customer. Two years from bid to the first one is rolled out of the factory. Two years. Guys, I'm counting the number of times I chew my food because I didn't follow that rule. Um, and literally, the first three that we build get destroyed. We build three of them as experimental. They take one, they do flying on it, vibration tests, stuff like that. They take another one, they do something else with it. And the third one they take and they shoot it full of holes to see how it holds up. So three of them are gone, wasted. Every time we build a new model for whoever, three of them are gone. Hey Jay, how's it going? So, um, yeah. But I built for a lot of company, a lot of countries, Australia, England, UAE. Um, I missed out on um, um, does it Netherlands? Um, and we also licensed some stuff out to Italy. I think they build them in Italy, and I think Japan builds their own too. But, yeah, built for a lot. Uh, Turkey bought some, I think, too. UAE, England, Australia, Canada. There's a lot, a lot of them that we, that I, in the 13 years I've been there, that we've built for a lot of different countries. Rarely built, I built more for foreign governments than I built for our own military. So, that's the way it is. I hate to leave, but it's time I had to blast and also... All right, Lisa, thank you. <clears throat> All right. All right. Yeah, we built them for Turkey. We built, we built for a lot of countries. Um, but anyway, guys, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut her down anyway. I meant to do that a while ago. But I enjoy talking, and I would really like... eat it while it's warm. So much better. 
to do stream yards on the next one out of that so any of you guys want to come in and join you can so I'd love to share the screen with other people not just me I want to see my ugly mug But again, everyone, thank you so much for coming in, hanging out, chit-chatting, uh, subscribing to other people in the chat. That's great, great news. I mean, we want to help other people grow as much as we want to grow ourselves, too. All right. Share the love. Love what you collect. Collect what you love. Don't worry about what anyone else says. Don't worry about what people say about your collection. It is your collection. Um... For me, it's, I collect what catches my eye, and I try not to overspend. Stay within a budget. Whenever I go out, I, I try. The last time I went out, I blew my budget real quick. Um, I told my wife, I, have, I only need 100 And I actually, because Ronnie, um, I blew my budget. And that's fine. It wasn't Ronnie's fault. Yeah, we. My wife buys the you know the boxes of them frozen pretzels, and then you just whoosh, run them under the sink real quick, and sprinkle a little bit of salt on it, pop them in the microwave for like a minute, pull them out, bam, good to go. All right, Alex, have a good one. Yes, everyone, have a great night, have a great rest of your week. Um, I don't know when we're gonna do something next, um, but we'll figure it out. Um. I was actually hoping John would have came out tonight, but I didn't see any notifications from him. I I really think um, this whole thing is affecting everyone. The, the prices, I think the prices are um, affecting everyone, not just, um, um, you know, the few. I, like, I really think it's getting harder and harder, like John says, to find stuff that's reasonably priced. I mean, we're all seeing it. Um, and even the, the older stuff, and I don't, listen, guys, stuff from the, the 80s is not vintage. Vintage is like 50s, 40s. That's vintage. That's, to me, that's vintage. It's other stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong, the 60s and 70s cards are really nice too, but, you know, the 80s stuff is not vintage. And people call it vintage. It's up to them. I, I don't care, but in my mind, it's not vintage. I was going to check here, yes. I'll check my YouTube notifications. I hope I didn't miss John. Checking my notifications now. Because my phone was upstairs for a while. My wife brought it down. She says, your phone was ringing. Ray from Philly, guys. Ray from Philly is another good guy. I don't read. So Adam sent me a congratulations on a thousand. Ray from Philly. If you guys don't know Ray from Philly, he's a pretty nice guy. He does... um. A lot of slab collecting and um, Hall of Fame, you know, player thingies. He does all slabs. Um, pretty nice guy. And I wanted to bump into him at the show. I think he said he was going to go Sunday. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll go Sunday. And then I said, no, I'm not going Sunday. A um, lot of nice guys. Adam's Card Closet. Big Chipper. Chipper Jones fan. 3B Collections. Um, was live two hours ago. Um, let's see, Urban Card Breaks, Papa J, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, A-E-C-K, Cards, A ASIC Cards was live 33 minutes ago, um, Stemmer's Hits gave me a comment, very nice, High Risk gave me a nice comment already, good, good, Cali Reseller, that's another one I'm subscribed to. Uh, Kev Bra Brado, Kev K E V Brado, was live. Um, New Stang N W Stang. If you guys don't know who he is, check him out. Um, Bowman nineteen fifty one. These are all people that I'm subscribed to. Tools T O O L Z Z three sixty. Games, cards, and more. Uh, Last Raps Baseball. Uh, Mike the uh, card collector, he's Mike the Indian card collector, Mike the card, he changed his name quite a bit, but 
He now goes by Mike the Card Dude, hashtag BB, um, the Card Hobbyist, uh, something Wong. Okay, a comment, very nice. Um, let's see, Stevens Cards. I did Ray from Philly. Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys. 25 Perez, TTM is another one. Jabs Family. Um, ID Jester was live. Um, Spurs Cards 21. Brent, Brent's Card Break was on RVA Sports Cards. Um, I'm trying to just stick, I, I subscribe to other people that are more than just um, baseball cards. Part Time Ripper, Silver Jackify. James Gip Gip, there it is. James Gip Gip is live four hours ago. Pepino Man, another great guy, another great YouTuber. Pepino Man. Brandon Steppens, uh, Peds Cards Collection, PED Card Collection. Trevor Bauer uploaded a video. Wesker Griff was live at the Philly show, so five hours ago. Um, that's an old video just being posted. Gradeworthy Trading Cards is another one. John Serena, S-E-R-E-N-A, uploaded a few TTM autograph successes. The Reseller Guy, Chris and Chris Collecting Cards, The Card Collector 255, Ollie Moon, Collectibles, Big Country's Wheelhouse, you won my, was it my 500 subscriber giveaway? Uh, prize cards guns and collectibles Kevin's budget card breaks cause wasting money K-O-Z apostrophe S cause wasting money Thunder Sports and Goal Horns <clears throat> also um, I haven't seen him Donald Blumdahl there he is Donald Blumdahl by God's grace is live was live nine hours ago so that was um a while ago stuff but anyway just to give you an idea of some of the people that I subscribe to as well as you guys here because everyone that's in here I am subscribed to um, but anyway Dirk Remington he didn't come on this evening yeah I know I'm, uh, again John uh, I think he's just having a hard time finding product I need to go out there and uh, you know give him some content do something with him <clears throat> Just so, you know, he has something to do. And I don't mind. I like collaborating with people. Um, it's good exposure for your channels. You know, and it can, if it can help someone else with a little bit of exposure, because I know what it's like to get a little bit of help from other people, like John. Um, it can sometimes, you know, make all the difference in the world. They don't realize how much influence they really have. You know. My goal is... To not buy any new cards until July, taking a month of June off with a new product. There you go, Donald. You have a lot of nice new stuff, Donald. I've seen your auctions. You have a lot of nice stuff. Yeah, like I don't have like any like I. The only new stuff I have, I, I you know get lucky and buy or happens to show up in a, a, a lot that I bought. You know. Um, there you go. Look at this. Rose clear. This uh, no, it's just a regular Pete Rose card. Ah, this keeps going. This guy's gotta stop. Andy, any thoughts? <laughs> Dude, got to stop the BS coming down the line. Yes, yes, you're right, Andy. L O L. Andy. You need a Snickers. Need a Snickers bar. Because he's being um, a little difficult right now. Anyway, thanks again, everyone. Vintage baseball card packs. How's it going? Sub to you already. All right. Goody G. Uh, I think Alex is gone now, Goody. We've been trying to wind it down for a little bit here. Um, so, again, thanks, guys. Uh, vintage baseball card packs. Am I subscribed to you or not? I'm going to have to check that out right now. I, I bet you I am. 
<laughs> I bet you I am. But we will check it out. Vintage baseball card packs. Alright, let's check this out. Ready? Let's go here. Let's go YouTube. Type in the search. Uh, do you have a channel there, Vintage? I see the past is alive. Vintage baseball card packs, there you are, right underneath. I spent $1,000 on vintage baseball cards, and here's what I got. Part 1, 1975 through 82, six months ago. All right. So I'm not subscribed to you, but I Hello am Hello, everyone. Now. Welcome back to the channel. Oh, no. Today I'm going to open up a 1983 Topps baseball whack. We're going to go to this one here. i got to turn the volume down. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Vintage go. Baseball Card Packs. There you, you go, go, Vintage, I just hit you up. Oh, what's going on there? Today I'm going to open up a 1981... So I got you, Vintage. Hopped on your bus. So let's get started. Yeah, um, so sorry, but Vintage, we're getting ready to, uh, to shut her down. I've been going for almost three hours now. Not that I'm tired, I can go forever, but I have work in the morning, and it starts early, and it's already 10.47 p.m. here. But look for my auction coming up on the 25th. Uh, we're going to start at between 6 and 7 p.m. East Coast time, Eastern time, and uh, we're going to be auctioning off some baseball, football, basketball, hockey cards. Nothing brand new, because I don't have any new stuff. It's all going to be, you know... Uh, a little bit older stuff, 80s and 90s, so maybe some 70s thrown in there. I think All right, mostly commons, but I'll try to put little lots together top. and figure it out. All righty, so Vintage, I hooked you up with a sub. Thank you, um, I appreciate it. And um, yeah, we'll uh, check all you guys later. Again, thank you everyone for stopping by. Um, Vintage before we go, we I'll tell you what, throw up, it and you got moderator wrench, and you can throw up your link if you want, so I don't know if anyone's still here or not, sure um, but I got you here, you know what, I got it right I've here, let's just do this, there you go, there's, there's uh, Vintage's, um, YouTube channel. All right, guys. But anyway, um, I'm on my way out the door, so to speak. Um, uh, and we will see you guys later. I, I didn't even um, get to do everything I wanted to do from work. I'm supposed to bring down the laundry basket for the wife. I got to put the trash out yet because um, tomorrow's trash day. And yeah, it's gonna be. A little bit before I can hit the hay. There's probably not going to be too many high value cards in this. Uh, mainly we're looking for Hall of Famers. And we're looking for uh, Ricky Henderson second year. And Fernando Valenzuela rookie card. So, Doc Medic. Dave Steed. Uh, this could be a rookie card, I believe. A rookie card or second year card. Mm -hmm. Cecil Cooper. This guy, I think this Cooper guy's been drinking. Here. Rick Dempsey. Good catcher. I think he's been drinking. Rick Burns. Okay. Three Armas. And of course he's got my number so he can text me all night long now. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to sign off guys. Thanks again. Um, Void, hey Void, how's it going? Holy crap. It's been a long... Yes, it has been Void. I've been actually trying to get off of here. And, uh, 391, break out the sunglasses. So I am going to watch uh, Vintage Vintage Baseball Card Packs. I'm going to watch his channel. I just subbed him up. I'm going to watch his video. And I've already clicked the notification bell. And I will leave a nice comment. And uh, that will make my subscription stick to his channel. And now i got burps from eating that pretzel. All right. Again, thank you, everyone, for stopping, hanging out, chit-chatting. Uh, help. Thank you for helping subscribe to each and every one of you guys helping each other out grow your channels and I will do my part to help you as well 
And uh, again, thank you and good night. John Jabs, enjoy your nap. So there you go. Good night, guys. Trading cards Peace. From 1981 here. So, like I said on the channel, I have lots.